guys what is Hello, up guys welcome to another weekly wednesday live stream with the insiders i'm peter ja here yeah uh, we're not actually this close together as usual uh, for those of you who don't know we're also keeping to the social distancing guidelines uh, where are our name tags <clears throat> it's coming it's coming all right all right all right of course there we go there we go um yeah glad to uh, to have you all join uh i'm already seeing some things in the chat so before we get started i just want to address uh one thing that uh some some really sad news that reached us yesterday uh, indeed our uh, ceo um, beloved uh, top man charles chang uh was has passed away yesterday um yeah needless to say we're all really heartbroken and and sad about it it's uh we're, we're, we're heartbroken and shocked uh, to be fair it's uh <laughs> something that well you don't expect and i don't definitely think, yeah uh, anybody is uh <laughs> is happy about this in any way it's uh it's just terrible um yeah we we, we we're so shocked we, we don't actually know you know what's going on we know there's a there's a, an investigation going on obviously um thank you all by the way in the chat for uh, uh the, the f's and, yeah, the, and the rest in pieces the rest in pieces yeah it's uh you know th this guy really meant a lot for for msi and not just uh he wasn't just a, a ceo your typical guy that you maybe hear about even if you work no matter what what kind of position you had uh, he took a personal interest in each and every one of us and he truly felt more like a big brother to all of us uh, so you know yeah msi really, uh, as a company feels more like a like a family to be honest than 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 a company um and and he truly was a big brother to us all and uh, yeah i mean peter yeah. obviously you know has already been in the company for quite a long time you know especially yes. compared to me but even i you know uh, i had the chance to have like a really good chat with him like because yeah. he really approaches people he just doesn't really you know sit up there and you know be, and be like that's it and you know i'm high up he's really like like yeah. one with the employees uh yeah 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 I can imagine it, so. it, you know it, it made him really special and remarkable and just by his personality and he was always you know uh, happy upbeat motivational his, his trademark was his his uh, you know his his ear to ear smile basically that was always on his face <laughs> he was always re ready to listen to you uh, always looking for you know to, to inspire people to, for the next step so yeah you will be greatly missed um, yeah without so, a doubt yeah. Just wanted to take a, a moment to address that um, because yeah obviously this was quite uh, quite a shocking development uh, which uh, on one hand is is really uh, well like i said heartbreaking on the other hand um, it, it also makes us feel more uh, motivated than ever to to carry on in the direction that we were going uh, that we know he wanted things to go um, and that's also the best way we we can honor his, his exactly. legacy is yep. yeah to to just you know keep so, everything going uh, making sure you guys uh, get the best products get the best experience and uh, yeah just trying to do better every single day <clears throat> so the show must the go show on. must go on indeed so that's also why you know we are here today um, um, we actually didn't really think about canceling the show but we you know needless to say maybe we won't be quite as upbeat or uh, try to be as funny as we usually are um, if that's the case yeah sorry about it but you, you probably can understand why uh, especially since it, this feels like a personal loss it's not like you read in the news like okay well I never knew the guy uh, most people in MSI knew this guy and, and, and talked with him personally and uh, really felt close to him. So anyway, um, let's make the best of it. Yeah. But like you said, the ja, uh, show must go on. Uh, also, by the way, just want to stress that uh, in, in all offices of MSI, everybody's still working. Obviously, people are sad, people are shocked, but uh, it, this doesn't impact any uh, processes, any services so uh yeah even if you need support today you'll probably be able to reach somebody uh like like normally so yeah um uh, again this is the best way i think we can uh we can honor him so let's uh let's get going shall all right we? let's go let's get into a little bit of more cheerful mood uh because today uh we are going to build the streaming pc of tomorrow 
using the B550 platform and uh, one of the, the latest uh, Ryzen processors, uh, Ryzen 7 actually, get into that a little bit later, but uh, this uh, processor, uh, these processors launched I think two, two, three days ago. So very, very uh, new, hot off the line. Um, and so today what, what you can expect is we will, we're gonna do a build basically. So um, I'm going to be building the PC for you uh trying to give uh, some some commentary along the way of uh you know hard, hardware choices and that kind of thing um if you have any questions let me know um in the chat we'll try to answer them as, as good as possible and uh i also saw already some questions about yeah. <laughs> we're not going to give away the uh pc though guys, uh, no, no 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 unfortunately today. not no no <laughs> we, we need it for our own streams no <clears throat> just kidding um but um uh yeah we, we um we're gonna have to return some of the samples we we are using today to build the pc yeah, if peter doesn't break it well i'm gonna do my best obviously uh but uh yeah if, if something does break then uh, whoops whoops indeed <laughs> whoopsie yes yeah um i also saw some questions in the chat about if there a giveaway yes of course today there's also a giveaway as you can see right above me here uh, today we're going to give away some Steam voucher codes, uh, $20 Steam vouchers. So uh, all you have to do is go to uh, msi.com slash two slash insider. There you will see a link that uh, guides you to the giveaway. Either that or every, I think, five minutes or something, uh, our bot in the chat will spam a direct link to the Gleam uh, uh, landing page, which uh, does the whole giveaway thing. Um, we are streaming on multiple different platforms as always. So it's, it's Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Mixer, maybe, as long as that platform's still up. Um, a lot of different platforms. Uh, we try to follow the chat, uh, and we really appreciate if you have any questions or just want to share some good vibes. Um, that's Definitely all fine. Um, yeah, and if you uh, if you want to participate in the giveaway, that's uh, that's also good. By the way, then now I'm gonna uh, show you uh, we. At the moment, we've also launched a campaign uh, which can be found at msi.com, which is the website we're looking at now. Uh, if you go to what's new, that's usually where uh, any kind of uh, you know promotional things, events, giveaways uh, are uh, located. So in the showcase arena, you can see here a streamer of tomorrow. This visual might look familiar <laughs> because it's yeah. the, pretty much the exact same visual that uh, is uh, the, the, the key visual for the stream. Uh, and the purpose here is really to show you guys if you want to get into streaming and gaming at the same time on your uh, PC and you're planning a new build, then uh, yeah, I mean, you should consider the, the new Ryzen processors uh, on a B550, for example, or an X570, it's really up to you, uh, platform, because they are really, really good for this, uh, specifically because they have, well, especially the Ryzen processors, the new ones, they, uh, they have a a hell of a lot of cores so that's really useful because games don't usually use all cores yet so that means you have plenty of headroom and, and cores left basically to handle the streaming uh, the the video encoding for you um, so if you look at the landing page here which I've just uh, gone into uh, you can already see uh, of course we, we give some uh, information about why B550 is uh, a really good platform for it and especially our motherboards because we uh, also have the um, Wi-Fi 6 which is ridiculously fast Wi-Fi uh, but also uh, 2.5 gigabit LAN which is also uh, really fast for uh, content uh, creation and, and if you want to need to swap really large files obviously to like a local uh, storage device um, here's some uh, more information as well the, the ryzen 3000 desktop processors are really uh, well suited for this um, i'll go into that a little bit later because there is a, a you know really specific things about these new xt processors uh, so I'll, I'll try to do my best to show you what is the difference between the xt processors and uh, uh, the already existing ones um, we uh, have implemented extra strong power solutions, so extra strong PWMs on uh, on these uh, P550 motherboards. Uh, so on the motherboard we'll be using today, which is the B550 uh, Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi, uh, we actually have the same uh, yeah power delivery components as on the uh, X570 Tomahawk, uh, which is uh, really known for its uh, its really good uh, yeah power delivery. Uh, VRM system basically 
it also has a really good thermal performance which you'll i'll show you later on on the i've got the motherboard here as well so i can show you later on in the close-up cam but it has really good uh, heat sink uh, for for extra heat dissipation so also again this to keep the vrm cool uh, obviously, it really also depends on what kind of uh, CPU you put in there, uh, how much power it draws. So, um, you know, you'll have to go very high up and then start some really ridiculous overclocking to run into any kind of, uh, if you even want to try to run any in, into any kind of trouble on this kind of platform. So, uh, you'll be good for streaming and gaming, uh, even if with some light overclocking. Um, here are some uh, recommended PC configurations for you. So, if you kind of don't want to uh, figure things out for yourself uh, we've got three main ones here one is based on the meg series so the enthusiast gaming segment uh, the mpg series so the uh, performance segment which is kind of like the middle of the road but to be fair i, I don't think the middle kind of describes it well i think it's quite <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, quite it's, fast and high <laughs> end still statement exactly uh, and then you've got the mag series which uh, in this case represents the well entry level ish at least uh, it's uh, yeah yeah so we have the arsenal, we have the performance, and we have the exactly. enthusiast. Exactly. And today uh, we are going to be building almost the exact build of the MPG series. So uh, as you can see here, I don't know if it's big enough for you guys to read, but um, um, actually, I think, yeah, you have a, oh, here we go. Yeah. There you go. Um, we are going to be using the Ryzen 7 uh, 3800 XT, so the brand new CPU. Uh, as a motherboard, we'll be using the uh, MPG B550 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi. Uh, the graphics card uh, is a little bit different from what it says here, because uh, we have opted to go for the RX 5700 yeah. XT Gaming X, so it's a uh, little bit higher up. Yeah, more punching power. Exactly. I mean, we had a sample here, so uh, yeah, you know, why not? Uh, that's always basically a good thing. If you have at home, if you already have, for example, a graphics card, but you're going to upgrade the rest of your rig, uh, just, you know, get the most powerful graphics card you can uh, it's really never a bad thing uh, for the cooler it's uh, one of our new uh, liquid coolers so uh, on this page it says the 240r which means it's basically uh, 240 uh, millimeters i think uh, which is basically two fan slots uh, we have opted to go for the uh, 360 which i'll show you later on i've got the box right here so uh, even a little bit bigger for extra cooling um, for the memory, we are using HyperX, a uh, little bit different than what it says here. I think we've got uh, 3200 uh, Predator, uh, but uh, we do have RGB, so that's that's a really important part here, guys. Um, where we are not gonna put in a uh, HDD drive, but for content creation, for example, if you are streaming, it makes sense to have like a bit of storage there as well. For uh, for example, for your, all your recordings of your streams that you're gonna later on process into video clips, for example, or for YouTube. Uh, so that's why uh, on this side, each of the build uh, contains a Seagate Ironwolf 6 terabyte drive, which is, um, yeah, th this is basically the series that's really uh, fit for uh, things like uh, NAS devices, like, you know, network storage, um, basically aimed at reliability, making sure that uh, whatever content you put in there, put on there, these drives uh, will, will last for a long time and are reliable. Um, for the main SSD, the main storage, we've got a Seagate Fire CUDA 520. Uh, on this website, it says a two terabyte version. Uh, we unfortunately only have a 500 uh, gig version. So we're gonna have to make do with that. That's fine though, we'll, we'll make it work. Um, for the process, sorry, for the power supply, on the website, it says a V5, uh, 650 watt uh, gold. However, we're gonna be a bit risky not really, but we're going to use a V550, so uh, a 550 watt, and that will be plenty for this build for today. So, uh, yeah, but even, you know, if, if you take a 650 watt, uh, it's kind of like, you know, again, the, the, the theme is a streaming build for the future. So if you take a bit higher wattage, you would be even having a little bit more margin, for example, for if you would want to upgrade to uh, a higher uh, power usage CPU or a graphics card in the future. So. Uh, that's uh, also a, a really solid choice looking at the future. And as a case, we're going to use one of our brand new uh, yeah, chassis, which is the uh, MPG Gungnir 110R, which looks pretty freaking sweet. And I have to say, I'm really impressed at it as well. It's a, it's a pleasure to, uh, to build stuff into. Um, and we're going to take a closer look at it in a minute uh, after we uh, do the 
and that front panel is just as sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, can, you can always see, you know, a bit, <clears throat> bit of uh, glass yeah. here, but it's like half, half. It's half covered and half glass. Uh, but there's also plenty of room for, for air to flow through. So, so this is pretty much the build we're going to be looking at today. With a few uh, additions, uh, Ja will pull up the specs of the exact build while I'm doing the build. So uh, you, can, uh, you can also ask him all about it. But for now, uh, what I want to go into is uh, the 3000 series Ryzen processors. Um, and especially the XT version. So what makes them different from the versions we already had. So the lineup of the new Ryzen processors, the XT versions, uh, is as follows. You have the uh, Ryzen 5 3600 XT. Ryzen 7 3800 XT uh, and Ryzen 9 3900 XT. Now, obviously, uh, the, the higher the number, um, the more powerful, the more cores. Uh, that kind of uh, it, it's that kind of logic. And then, if you go into uh, here's the specific processor we're going to be using today. That's the Ryzen 7 3800 XT. So it has eight cores, 16 threads, uh, boosts up to uh, 4.7 gigahertz. Uh, with a 3.9 gigahertz base clock speed, uh, 36 megabytes of game cache, and it's around a uh, 105 watt TDP. So uh, yeah, it's it's pretty spicy, I would say, for a, for a processor. Uh, we can expect some pretty good, sweet performance out of this, and especially those the, the large number of cores, but also the uh, per core performance is really what's going to make this uh, a very suitable for uh, gaming and streaming at the same time. <coughs> oh yeah. Do you have any? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's quite fun to see that uh, uh, you know, people are recognizing Edwin K because Edwin K just ah. joined. He dropped a comment and people were like, "Hey, the, he was the guy that won the, the giveaway, you know, the Infinite X last one. week." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see. And uh, some people really like RGB on the front. Uh, I read something uh, from someone who said like, "What do we want? More power? <laughs> when do we want it? Oh, RGB!" Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's always fun to. Uh, well, everybody knows that RGB is the real thing that provides the power. You know, it's <laughs> the more no RGB, RGB, the, the more the more FPS you can expect. Uh, how many fans will you install for your build tomorrow, Sofian? Uh, we're going to go into that to in, in a few moments. But basically, for this build, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we have four in total. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll just continue with the uh, the closer look at the processor. So uh, here's basically the slide uh, that explains the difference between the regular, uh, or sorry, the, the, the previous uh, Ryzen 3000 and the new XT model. So basically, what uh, it makes it different is that it's based on a refined seven nanometer process. So the the 3000 series basically was the first one to use the seven nanometer process. Um, and obviously, the longer they uh, use that, the more refined, the more mature the process gets. So the better the, uh, uh, the quality, basically, that comes out of it. Uh, so this means that it allows for uh, higher clock speeds, more efficiency. And I mean, that efficiency, you, you could choose kind of uh, two directions or in the middle. But you could choose to, with that efficiency, to say, we'll keep the same performance level. But the uh, energy, the, the power usage will be less. Uh, that's an option, or you could say, "Look, we'll, we'll just uh, keep it at the at the same power level, but then you get more performance out of it." Or you could go somewhere in the middle. And uh, with this uh, these processors, it, it kind of differs per um, you know Ryzen five, seven, or nine. But in general, they kind of went in the middle pretty much. So what that results is you've got a, a higher boost speed than the previous uh, three thousand series. You've got faster cores, so it's it, you know again the efficiency is a little bit better. So that means per cycle, per uh, uh, clock, basically you get just a bit more performance out of it. So it's it's a bit uh, faster. Um, and uh, what's also really good to know is that especially for our motherboards, uh, the new processors don't really require any uh, BIOS updates. I mean there might be some BIOS updates uh, available. This is more uh, usually for for example additional memory uh, compatibility or XMP profiles, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, pretty much if you have a B550 motherboard uh, or uh, yeah, it, it should, and, and you want to update uh, or you want to use a uh, 3000 XT uh, CPU, it's ready to go. It, it should work out of the box. Um, and of course, well, it's the proven Zen 2. You know, uh, Zen 2 is really made, the, is really a game changer for, for AMD uh, again. Um, 
And I think that's a real good thing for, for all of us. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a great step up for the, uh, especially for the AMD fan uh, fans out there. Well, not just for the AMD fans, you know. I think for the for, for the PC, uh, the, the 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 tech uh, enthusiast community, but but gamers and content creators alike, you know, more performance for for uh, you know, not too much money basically. For a good cost performance ratio is always good. Uh, I think we all benefit from that. Yeah, definitely. And now they really stepped up their game and. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just getting more and more competitive, uh, competitive out there, and I think for everyone out there, that's good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, also, just uh, this morning, we got some uh, nice uh, overclocking results from our in-house overclocker Top PC, who uh, again did a, a really good job. So this is uh, he used the uh, 3800 XT, so the processor we're actually going to be used today, and pushed it all the way up to 6.11 gigahertz, which is freaking high i mean you don't you don't do that uh, with normal cooling and stuff you need to do like extreme overclocking um but it's also and he did that with the exact motherboard uh we are going to be using today so the b550 gaming carbon uh, and why i'm mentioning this is i mean for most people this uh really doesn't apply uh, they will not be overclocking like this but it, it just goes to show how much this B550 gaming carbon uh, motherboard can handle and how good the VRM really is. If it can handle this kind of level of uh, extreme overclocking, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's more than good enough for, for any kind of other task. Again, it, it's the same VRM uh, build that we use for the X570 Tomahawk, which, is, uh, which has a, a reputation for having one of the best VRMs on the market. Uh, and and it it shows you know because also on a b550 motherboard um yeah if you can overclock like this that's ridiculous you're set <laughs> uh he also put a uh, a 3900 xt so that's uh the, the one with uh even more cores and uh higher uh higher tdp usage so higher power usage and he, he pushed it all the way to 6.1 gigahertz and also that was no problem for the b550 gaming carbon so again it just goes to show uh, how ridiculously well built the VRM of this board is uh, and what it can handle without issues. Um, all right, I think that's it for the, for the slides. So we can, uh, we can get to the process of building now. <coughs> really? Yes, let me know if you guys have any questions in the chat. Um, I know Ja has pulled up all the, the product pages and all the specs, so if you have any questions about that, I, I believe Ja will be able to answer them. <clears throat> oh yeah, I'll do my best. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I see some questions about, uh, I see graphics cards and RTX, so I, I also want to address that. Uh, Marcelo Amado, should we consider RTX when buying a graphics card? It really depends on uh, what you want and also your budget, of course. I mean, if you want to enjoy ray tracing in, uh, for example, Cyberpunk 2077 uh, when it comes out. Yes, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. Um, but, you know, again, I, I expect in the future it will be more widespread in, in implementation. So uh, it really depends on the timing, I guess, as well. But yes, uh, definitely worth a, a look. <coughs> Yeah, so there's like a, a second or third question already regarding uh, the budget for this kind of PC. So if we really like go through like the list of all the components right there, uh, depending yeah. on where you live, uh, you know, it should be looking like a 1400, 1500 euros uh, or US dollars built. Right, so one and so, a half K pretty yeah, much. So with that, you really are like set for like the coming year. So, you know, hence yeah. also what we're trying to tell you guys, you know, you don't need to buy like a multi-million dollar uh, gaming PC <laughs> uh, in order to be able to stream for the past uh, for the few years up ahead. So yeah, Peter's going to get his, uh, get his hands dirty. Uh, yeah, hopefully not <laughs> too much, but yeah. Uh, but indeed, so it, it, it's really amazing, you know, with, with a, a PC that's, you know, not even that ridiculously expensive that you can have such uh, awesome performance and, and do, you know, streaming and gaming at the same time. I mean, you, you could do that for years, but games are getting more demanding, obviously, and even streaming, uh, you know, with uh, higher resolution streaming coming up and stuff like that. So really uh, also the more cores, but also the core performance really helps uh, with that uh, process and, and to make that possible. 
Yeah, let's do the build. All right, so um, let's see. What, what should we start with? Should we start with uh, a closer look at, uh, at the motherboard? <clears throat> what do we have here? Yes. So right here, we have a uh, B550. Uh, sorry, an MPG uh, B550 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi. It's a, it's a gorgeous board, as you guys can see. Really nice. Uh, it also, of course, has RGB. I'm not going to surprise you. <laughs> Um, a couple of things about this, again, uh, what I already said, basically, it has a really good VRM, so the, the thing you don't see, because it's under the heat sinks here and here at the top as well, um, there are uh, a lot of, uh, you know, power components. Um, if you want to know more about that, you can always check out the webpage, but it's, it's more than enough to handle any uh, Ryzen, any of the current AM4 Ryzen processors. Yeah, so all the way up to Ryzen 9 series, yes. no problem. Exactly. Uh, and the things that you do see here are uh, just basically blocks of aluminium. I mean, well, you can pretty much see it here as well. There's a lot of uh, um, space basically for the air to move through, which basically just uh, creates extra surface space for more dissipation. Uh, same, same story basically for this one here as well. So really uh, solid aluminum blocks uh, for the cooling. Uh, well, it's an AM4, obviously, AM4 platform, so uh, yeah, all the latest AM4 mo uh, CPUs will, will go in there, just like the uh, Ryzen 7 3800 XT that we're going to be using today. Um, the M it has two M.2 slots, which one is under here and one is under this one. Uh, these are actually also uh, aluminum uh, cooling plates, basically, so these, these will help to keep the, uh, the M.2s uh, modules cool. Also, really nice touch is that these days it's getting much more common, but it's just something that's really uh, I really appreciate when I'm building a PC. <laughs> and actually, I, I noticed that while practicing for this one, I, it's been a while since I, I built a full PC. So it was uh, it was kind of like a I needed a refresh course. Anyway, but uh, yeah, the I/O panel that's already uh, pre-installed and and fixed basically with some screws here. So you can remove it if you need to, but I mean to be honest, why, why would, would you? you? Why exactly? <laughs> Because usually, and it's, it's happened to most people who build a PC probably that, you know, when once you finish building the PC and you fix the motherboard into the case, and then you turn it around and, and you look in, in, the, yeah, in the box for the motherboard and you see that the I.O. panel is still in there, the, the cover, and you just think, oh, crap. Can't I just leave it out, you know, because I don't want to have to take everything out again just to put the I.O. panel, the, the, the cover in there. So it's just fixed there, uh, just a little quality of life thing, but it's, yeah. Is much appreciated, I think. Uh, but yeah, it's an amazing little board. Uh, again, this is the, this is also a Wi-Fi version, so that means that you've got, of course, the uh, the Wi-Fi antennas right here. I think if you want to know more, even more detailed information about uh, this board or, or our B550 lineup, that uh, Mike did a uh, an dedicated stream, stream yeah. yeah, about about this lineup. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think. So if you look after you, this stream, you want to look that up, you can check out the um, the playlist, the MSI Insider playlist, and there you'll find some streams about uh, specifically about these platforms. And obviously, Mike will know a lot more about this uh, and, and tell a lot more about these things than I do. This is, this is his product segment. <laughs> uh, he's on holiday, by the way, if you're wondering why he's not doing the stream. He's also on holiday. Uh, and I'm sure he's uh, he's watching if he if he's able to. Yeah, and he probably is gonna be like, oh, Peter mentioned 2.5G, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. You know, we're trying to do our best to exactly. fill Mike's shoes, but exactly. uh, yeah. But yeah. I mean, that's a good point indeed. I, I think I already mentioned it before, but you know, the um, indeed the LAN port is uh, two and a half, uh, 2.5 gigabit, so that's really really fast. Uh, again, really uh, useful if you have large files that you want to transfer uh, within your network or even. If in the future the uh, internet speeds get ridiculously fast, which yeah, is also I definitely a possibility, it. I think a lot of people are uh, hoping and, and trying to get that. So uh, yeah, always nice. Uh, so this is the motherboard we're going to be using today. Um, let's see. If you have any questions, any specific questions about this, uh, let me know. Yeah, someone is asking, uh, so he just bought the B550 Tomahawk and right. asking like, what's the difference between MAG, MEG and PG? Oh, this is a perfect yeah. question for you to answer. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, there are stuff like, uh, okay, so we have obviously more than just motherboards and, and uh, you know, cooling. Uh, so we have monitors, we have desktops. Mm. 
So we have a lot of product groups. And uh, you know, all of these are being kind of placed into the MAG, MPG, MEG group for you guys to uh, better recognize, to have a more familiar feeling regarding, okay, whenever you see MEG, you know, oh, that's like really like top of the end of uh, wherever that product is sitting in the lineup. It's like yeah. if it's MEG motherboard, you'll know that this is the motherboard with the best features on it, you know, with the best VRM and et cetera. So anything that you can expect from the best product from a segment you can yes. expect in the MEG. Top level. So that's why really it's enthusiast level. And then, yes. you know, if you just want more features, you want really good quality, but you don't need all the extras and even even going beyond that, you can go to MPG. So like that's like the performance. So Peter said earlier, you know, maybe that's like the, the middle way, but really yeah. it's like on top of the middle way. So it, it, middle way really doesn't really uh, express the, the quality of MPG. But you can see it as in between the enthusiast and the arsenal. So the MAG, which is like the, the entry level tier of all of our product groups, that's where you can expect where you can have a solid, no nonsense, no nonsense gaming product. But if, for example, you don't want to have Wi Fi, well, hey, go to MAG, you know, stuff like that. So here you have a solid uh, foundation of what's a really good no-nonsense gaming product, but you don't have all the extra features, for example, you might be missing out on this and on that, but if that doesn't bother you, then MAG is definitely the way to go for you. So MAG, MPG, MEG, just uh -huh. segmenting uh, whatever the quality and feature it is that you can expect from different product groups in general. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, I just also remembered one thing that uh, I was told to uh, to say, which was important. Uh, for the uh, uh, the networking chip, we are using uh, Realtek, which means that it's uh, yeah, it, it's really stable uh, and it doesn't uh, drop any connections. So that's uh, that, that's a, that's that, a bonus. That's a real plus point. Wouldn't uh, that be a hassle if uh, if that keeps exactly, happening? Exactly. Exactly. No, but it's just apparently you know this is this this is what really uh, one of the things that. Uh, People in the know, they will know if you say that we're using the real tech chip. That's a, that that that's a plus point. Oh so yeah. There you go. Uh, all right, the CPU we're going to be using. Uh, it's in the package here. It's a. It, it looks a bit messy, maybe because uh, we. Well, again, I, I've uh, been uh, practicing with it as well. Uh, this is a Ryzen. This is the the Ryzen seven. 3800 XT. Uh, I'll, wait, I'll just get it out for you guys. You know, these, these AMD uh, processors, I'm always afraid I'm going to bend the pins. And yeah, during really the uh, preparations, there. this actually happened. So I don't know how it happened because it was in the, in, the, in, the, in the protector basically the whole time. Let's see if we can get that on camera. Uh, so it's a 3800 XT. Yeah, there we go. So it really is the new one. And as far as I know, all the little pins are still unbent. Uh, let's let's try and keep it that way. <laughs> so I'm 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 probably best off if I really you know try to stop touching it because I'll just put it back in the in the protector. Seems like now, a good in starting the, point. Yeah, in in the plastic. <laughs> See people loving the XTs. Nice. Looks huge, yeah. Well, you know, when you hold it up close, it does. Uh, I mean, again, you know, this is—it's uh, it, not like a thread ripper. It's uh, its an AM4, so it's—it's it's like a standard size for the AM4 socket, uh, obviously. But it's, uh, yeah. Like it whatever, is a nice process. Whenever I hold like a CPU, I automatically get this feeling like, hmm, you know, you're really holding like the heart of your PC, right? So it's yeah. So it's right in your hand, in your palm. I, I used to say this when I, when I, you know, before I was working at MSI, and uh, I mean, I was kind of like a hardware enthusiast. As in, I, I, it's not that I built PCs all day, but I, I was really engaged in, in, in the news. Like. I was really following it and stuff like that. But you know, the first time I was building my own PC, I really wanted somebody who knew what they were doing to, to you know, help me with it because I always said, you know, it, it feels like I'm doing like an open heart surgery uh, if I'm touching the CPU or doing it, having to do anything with that. It, it really felt like that back in the day. These days, it's you know, it, it's still you need to be careful. You need to know what you're doing, but it, it's a bit more casual, obviously. But I, I still remember quite well how it felt when I was less, um, yeah, uh, less experienced in this field. It really felt yeah. like, oh wow, <clears throat> it's really you exciting, really and don't really know what times. you're doing. And <laughs> yeah. It's a bit scary and exciting at the same time, you know. Anyway, 
all right. So uh, the memory. Uh, I don't know if you did. You have the the specs, uh, or oh, they're actually are they behind me? Is that the specs? Uh, yeah, yeah. We have all the so, specs so that, there. That means I'm in the way. <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, I got memory modules here as well. Uh, sure. maybe, well. Maybe I should go here. Maybe I should. Because I want to show. You know. I want to show them in the close-up cam, obviously. But uh, these are two uh, HyperX Predator DDR4 modules. There you go. Uh, I do believe they are uh, eight gigabyte each, uh, with a 3,200 megahertz speed. Uh, and again, they will be plenty. And of course, I think one of the most important oh, things. But you yes, will you, you will see it once we put it in, oh, in yeah. the build and uh, power it up. There will be RGB. Oh yes, there will be RGB. So yeah, um, good memory. Uh, also really important for for content creation and uh, you know working with uh, well also for gaming obviously, but um, content creation programs. Uh, right for the. Storage, we're going to be using, in, in this case, a single uh, Seagate Fire Cuda 520. Uh, this is the uh, 500 gig model, M.2 SSD. Uh, really fast, works really well, of course, with, uh, with our motherboards with the uh, Gen 4 uh, M.2. Uh, obviously, it's the uh, PCIe uh, 4, uh, basically, lanes also with, um, uh, with the M.2, but also with the uh, graphics card, so also straight the straight to the link with the graphics card here we go there's of course this bad boy and, and it oh, really yeah, is a heavy a, chunk. a heavy boy <laughs> a thick boy um this is our rx 5700 xt gaming x isn't she or he glorious that chunk is definitely glorious <laughs> the, the chunk oh yeah the chunk is real exactly. the chunk of power exactly so yeah, the chunk of glory. So yeah, this this uh, oh sorry yeah this, uh, this just covering the I/O as well. So it has a single uh, HDMI port and a triple Display port, and that's plenty for this card as well. <laughs> Everyone in chat is also saying, "Ooh, he's thick." <laughs> yeah, yeah, thick yeah. boy, thick boy, thick boy. All right, uh, for the cooling. We're using, uh, like I already mentioned before, but it's the MAG Core Liquid uh, 360R. Uh, 360 stands for, of course, 360 uh, millimeters, which is basically, uh, well, if you know anything about PCs, is that the uh, regular size for fans, for example, case fans, is uh, 120. So two of these guys is a 240, and three of these guys is 360. So that's where the uh, the name comes from. It's not 360 because it, you know, it can. Turn around 360 degrees, unfortunately. But um, the fans do turn around 360 degrees, and so does the RGB, as you'll see later on. But yeah, it's a really sweet uh, piece of cooling there, liquid cooling. Um, so yeah, this is actually we already built this one into the PC because it it's, uh, it takes a bit of time to align everything properly, and we didn't want to bore you guys that much. Um, so we've already gone ahead and done a little bit of work. So I'll just grab the the sweet case that we're going to be built using as well. And this right here is the Gumnir 110R. Uh, and this really is a really nice uh, chassis, I have to say. It's, it's an evolution based on the uh, existing, uh, or the previous, I should say, maybe, uh, Gumnir line. Um, which, well, when did that launch, actually? Is that like one and a half years ago or something? That's uh, at the Somewhere beginning of last year. So yeah, year and a half. Yeah, there you go. So um, yeah, some tempered glass, as you can see. Uh, the front is pretty much half on half. So uh, the half of it is is closed, um, and half of it is, is tempered glass. On the sides, uh, let's see how we can give you some detailed shots of that. But on the sides, you'll see there's a, a lot of space for breathing. Uh, on both sides, so there's one on, on this side with also a tempered glass side. But also, when I turn it around on the other side, as you can see here, also a lot of space to breathe. At the top, also some uh, ventilation holes, and even uh, in between here, uh, there's some uh, some space for the the fans that are actually uh, right uh, behind here. So there's actually three fans at the front. So there's a lot of space that they can uh, grab air from. And also at the bottom here is also uh, an intake grill, basically. 
Then continuing with the ventilation at the top, you've got the uh, you've got a lot of mesh here that you can uh, you could even put fans here to create even more uh, pressure difference. But uh, there's a nice magnetic cover here, dust cover that you can uh, easily take off, clean, and then put back on. Um, notable also on the outside, the, the front I/O. So obviously you have the power button, you have a reset button, you have an LED uh, button. So there's already, uh, with the, the components that are already built inside, basically, uh, you can already, when, once you power it up, you don't even have to have addressable RGB, basically. You can just, by pushing this button, it will cycle through predetermined uh, RGB profiles. Uh, but obviously you can also, they are fully addressable, so you can also uh, attach them to, for example, your motherboard with Mystic Light and then uh, control them that way. Um, the I.O. Obviously, there is uh, a, a Type-C, which, if I'm correct, is uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2. You have that fully correct. Who's, who's keeping track? Uh, <laughs> and then there are two Yes, USB, USB 3.2 Gen, Gen 1. 1. Exactly. Um, but let's just say they are really, really fast um, connectors. So they should be plenty fast for, for things like storage or whatever you want to connect there. And, of course, um, audio jack. So there's the uh, separate microphone and uh, headphone jacks here as well three and a half millimeter jacks so and those are always the, uh, handy to have uh, on on the front side if you just quickly want to you know connect something like a storage device or an external device uh peter when yes. are you going to uh, peel off all the plastics because people are going crazy I, well I, I left it on on purpose so mm. <laughs> we'll get to that because i knew you guys would enjoy that part but uh, I have to say that I'm, I'm not sure. I'm tempted to leave it on until we finish the build because I'm going to be, you know, touching it all over and I don't want to get my fingerprints on it uh, until I'm done. So maybe it's better. And this is, I also would um, suggest if you guys have, you know, a case with tempered glass and there's this, this plastic on it, obviously. I mean, I would be tempted to, you know, as, as you pull it out of the box, the first thing you want to do is just, you know, uh, take that off. But if you still need to build in it, uh, you know, you'll be, you'll be touching the glass a lot. So honestly... Um, I would just leave it on first, um, make sure you, you build a PC, make sure everything works, then uh, put the, the covers back on, then take the plastic off. It just saves you a lot of time, you know, having to polish the whole thing again. So, <laughs> and I know it's hard to resist not not peeling it off. Trust me, it's, it's you can already see I kind of couldn't resist already starting. Anyway, um, yeah, what else can I show you guys? We're going to be taking the panels off in a minute. Um, yeah, let's show you guys the inside. I think that's a good next step. So one side, by the way, uh, is uh, tempered glass. And the other side is not this side. And of course, this side, well, you could do tempered glass, but there's it's like the back of the motherboard, and there's really not much to see there. And a the whole cable mess. Because, uh, spoiler alert, I'm not going to do cable management today. So... Please don't judge me on that. <laughs> Should be uh, right. it, it's going to look terrible, uh, but it's it's functional for now. Uh, normally, I would definitely uh, advise you guys to do uh, you know at least some cable management, make sure everything is nice and tidy. Uh, but in this case, you know we're just doing a build for for one day for a stream basically. Uh, after that, we're going to disassemble it again. So there's there's really not that much point. Yeah, I think maybe it's a good time for uh, for our first. Steam giveaway, maybe? I see some guys saying, <laughs> can we have a Steam code? Sure. Uh, are you guys ready for the first uh, winner? Uh, well, uh, Peter is busy peeling off, uh, well, no, 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 the no. screws, I'm I guess. I'm to try not to. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Resist. I'm just going to draw the first winner of today's giveaway. So, guys, if you haven't noticed, uh, well, I am off screen, so I'm still talking. <laughs> and if you just join the live stream, you can still win, uh, win one of the giveaways. So yes. twenty dollars Steam wallet codes. If you just go to msi.com slash two, you, you can put insider, the main view on if you want. And uh, you can, uh, it's right there, so you can just there follow the uh, visual. So the first winner is going to be. All right. Mariko, Mauricio. Mm, try, try a bit more of a Spanish accent. Well, I'm not maybe. sure. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be, but no. Mauricio. Yeah, maybe. it sounds like it. So uh, yeah, Peter already did a pretty good. Kind of, kind of sounds it. right. Uh, maybe so, we, we got it all wrong. Um, Apologies. If congratulations. We did, congratulations, <laughs> indeed. I think the most important part is you win a Steam code. Oh yeah. 
So get it going with, uh, I, I believe the Steam uh, sales is still going on, right? The summer sales, it's still going crazy. Uh, I think so, yeah. I'm not sure so, when it ends, actually. That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, that the $20 just became 60 so it, It's always enjoy. a good thing. <laughs> uh, all right, I see a question. I don't want to dodge it. Uh, Caesar and Tilla. Hey, Peter, is the front panel made of plastic or is it metal? Uh, so I don't know which part you mean. If you if you mean the uh, the front uh, where the I/O cover is, basically this is this is all metal. So also you know this whole part here, and pretty much also the uh, let's see the side of course, this is metal. Um, but if you're talking about this part, this is uh, plastic indeed. So the, the the front cover basically this this whole part. Um, see this is it? yeah this side. So basically uh, fr from uh, th this is still metal. But the front part is, is plastic indeed. Um, so that's, uh, it, it doesn't really look like plastic in the first place. So, I mean, well, the fact that you have to ask kind of already says that. <laughs> it's not obvious that it's plastic, let's put it that way. And it looks, uh, it looks pretty sweet. Also, not sure if you guys see that, but yes. Maybe in, in the close up cam, we get, you can see that a bit better. But there's a, like here, it's a, it's a really subtle, MSI logo. I really like how they did that as well. It's like it's not screaming at you. It's it's not in white. It's not in red. It's just a really subtle logo. Just yeah, casually put there. Yeah, and it seems like uh, we are the only ones who uh, weren't aware of when uh, the sales ends, because everybody was commenting when it's gonna end. Uh, ah yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, is the RGB is the MSI logo RGB? Not not this one, no. Uh, but we're gonna have some uh, a different uh, MSI logo that is RGB, by the way. But uh, you'll see that when we uh, finish the build and turn it on, obviously. Um, so before we get started, I uh, just want to show you guys the uh, the inside of the PC here. As you can see, it's uh, well these days a pretty standard layout. As in, uh, you got plenty of space here. Uh, there's a, a cover here for, as you can see here, the the power supply unit is already in there. So uh, yeah, I decided to already put that in there. Um, we do recommend also always pretty much to have a, uh, especially for this kind of build, and if you want to be future, more future-proof as well, to have a modular power supply, so you can always, uh, no matter what kind of motherboard, CPU, or other components you switch to, that you can always have the right uh, amount of connectors and the right type of connectors. Uh, so that's always a good idea. Uh, there's a space for a, an additional two and a half inch uh, hard drive right here as well, by the way, already in the case. <laughs> So uh, there's plenty of space for, for cable management, even though I'm not going to do a, a good job at that. But there's a lot of like, you know, holes here for the power supply uh, cables. And at the side here, you can already see some cables sticking through with uh, like a rubber cover that can uh, hide the mess behind it a little bit. Uh, normally, there would be three fans on this side here. Uh, there are now three fans as well, but there's also this boy here. This is the uh, Core Liquid 360R, uh, and the fans are actually part of it. So uh, they are uh, they came with the radiator. We, we actually took the fans that were part of the uh, case out uh, because we wanted to put the uh, radiator as a whole there. And as you can see, I mean, even, even for a case like this, and this is not a, a terribly tall case. It, this is, I think, uh, like a yeah, a mid tower. Yeah, the metal case. Um, but as you can see, I mean, it's almost uh, also this radiator. It, it pretty much takes the full, um, yeah, the full space that you have available uh, vertically on the front. But that does give you uh, a really good cooling solution. Uh, other than that, there's one. So uh, I don't know who asked in, in a while ago, but they were asking how many fans are you going to put in this build. So there's uh, already three right here, with the radiator, of course, and then there's one at the back uh, as an exhaust. So that's the that's the setup we've got today. <clears throat> yeah, which is uh, for our, uh, for our events already more than capable. But of course, at home, if you have the same setup, you can still use like the upper. Uh, Exhaust area to put in more uh, two more fans if you like it to have even more RGB and then more airflow. Of course, that's uh, you yep. can always do that. Serrano is asking, can you place a radiator on the top? Uh, you can, but I don't think uh, I don't think that the 360 would fit here. No, so the if you can see, will not fit, so. there's there's pretty much space. I think you you could use the uh, the one that's mentioned on the website, which is the uh, 240R. 
Yeah, the 240 that, that one would fit. Yes, uh, but the 360 uh, only fits in this way uh, at the front. Well, another guy was asking uh, if there are going to be more winners uh, throughout the stream. Yes, yes. Uh, we'll have more giveaways, so don't give up if you haven't won on the first try. There are going to be more chances. Exactly. All right, um, let's see. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're good to go. I mean, for the rest, you can see it's it's just uh, all we did, but pretty much is put the uh, the power supply in, and uh, put the radiator in. On the other side, I can maybe quickly show you. No, actually, I, I don't think I will. But there's a uh, there is a an RGB controller or like a hub uh, attached at the back. Uh, so basically, what I've done also is to attach uh, m most of the fans and the case RGB basically to that. Um, and that's some of the uh, some of the cables sticking out at the top uh, here, but you will see that later on when I connect them to the motherboard as well. Uh, what what that does basically is also make sure that you uh, don't have to use all the different cables on your motherboard uh, to connect to the RG the different RGB connectors. Uh, you can pretty much just uh, take as long as they have the same amount of uh, LEDs, you can uh, connect them all to the RGB hub at the at the back, basically of the uh, yeah that's strapped to the back of this part here, and basically uh, you only have to then connect that hub, so it will only take one connector instead of multiple. Uh, we still we're going to connect multiple connectors though, because uh, yeah we can't connect everything to the to the hub, also due to the different count of uh, RGB uh, sorry the, the LEDs in uh, some of the components. All right, so let's see. I think we're gonna put this thing flat and start with uh, the build. Oh yeah, it's happening guys. Here we go. I'm gonna try and not yeah. lean over too much. Uh, <laughs> I hope I don't have a bald spot yet. But uh, I'm working on it, as you guys can see. Yeah, there we go. We're getting there. We're he getting there. To say, Peter, the dad, it's well on his way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of hoping to, to keep my dad hair as long as I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, there were some people asking about uh, whether there's like a uh, well, RGB control button on the front on the case. Uh, yes, there is. Yes. Uh, you can fully adjust all the RGB effects with the button if you don't want to dive into the software. And I believe uh, later when we power up the PC, uh, Peter can very well show you how it works. Uh, it's very simple and what yeah. kind of effects you can expect yeah. with it. Um, before we start, by the way, maybe I'm just going to take this case off so we can use the close-up cam to show you guys the, the first part usually what i do but this is really personal preference is um, some guys just start off uh, take the the motherboard basically and build it straight into the pc and, and start that way let's see if i can get this one a little bit closer for you guys uh i don't know can we do this ah, anyway um, usually what i tend to do is um, at least uh install the CPU already first and, and just make sure it's locked into the, the socket. So you basically, the, the benefit there is once you put it into the case, there you'll probably have you know a lot of stuff around cables, other things that you can kind of get caught on or just get in the way. Uh, if you just have your motherboard not installed yet, it's, it's just easier. You don't have anything around you. So you're, you're much more, it's much easier basically just put it in there. Uh, there's nothing getting in the way. Um, and really, there's nothing stopping you from already putting the um, uh, at least the, the processor in, the memory, and also the M.2. So basically, the things that you're going to have to put onto the motherboard that are not too big. Uh, in terms of installing the cooler already, that I usually will do uh, when it's in the in the case already, uh, because then you have, you're going to have to do some cable management. And in this case, especially because you know uh, the radiator of the cooler is in the case, so. Uh, if you if you build it if you try to build that in uh, before the oh, sorry after the motherboard is in you're you're gonna have uh, a lot of things potentially getting in the way or potentially getting damaged so uh, best to keep those things separate. So <coughs> yeah, the chat's already saying uh, to you, Peter, don't break the pins. No, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. So uh, yeah, it's just basically uh, AM4 socket, AMD socket. It's really simple. Just. Uh, there's a latch here, you just unfasten it uh, and put it to the top basically, so the socket kind of uh, hinges open. And then you carefully, keyword, carefully, take the CPU out. Don't drop it. 
and there's a uh, I don't know if I can show you guys this. Can we? Oh, we're in the close-up camera, right? So on the CPUs, uh, there will be a really small, like silver dot in one of the corners. I don't know if we can get a. Here we go. And it's only in one of the corners, and this is important because the CPU only goes in one way. And on the motherboard, you will see uh, a same or similar marking on one of the corners. So as you you'll see, the other corners don't have it but only on one of the corners. So this will tell you how to align the CPU uh, so you can get it in right the first time. But you, you, you know, they're really tiny, so you really have to pay attention. <laughs> and indeed, don't drop it. <laughs> so you make sure it's aligned. And basically, you know, there should be no force involved. You just, you, you lower it onto the socket and it should just, all the pins should just fall into, into place, into the right uh, holes. And then you just uh, pull the, uh, it's going in a close up view of this, but pull the latch in like this. I don't really feel much pressure. I, as you can see, I can even let go of the latch. It doesn't really come back up. So, and then I just lock it into place and that's pretty much it. There's the processor already in place. So that's one down. Um, next up, we're gonna do the, uh, the M.2 drive. So as you can see, it's the uh, Seagate Firecuda 520. Uh, this is a Gen 4 times 4 NVMe SSD, which means it's really, 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 really fast. Uh, I also think we had a stream not long ago where, uh, again, Mike on one of our motherboards, I'm not sure which one, I thought it was a, maybe a Threadripper one or something. Um, demonstrating just how ridiculously fast these things can get uh, also when in an arrayed configuration you know when you have multiple ones of these connected which can uh, transfer or share the the write and read speeds and that was just ridiculous i mean that's the kind of speeds you uh <laughs> you don't really expect or even i don't know they're hard to comprehend i guess um <laughs> So here uh, on this motherboard, we the M.2 slots are, uh, like I said, they are hidden pretty much behind uh, or below the heatsink. So I'm going to take the one closest to the CPU, which is always recommended because shorter lanes. Um, so I'll take that one off. There's two screws here. I'm going to quickly take that off. And you'll also see once I lift it out of place that... Oh, not quite out of there. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Hussein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bless you. Yeah. Uh, as you can see on the on the bottom of this pad, so it, it says the Lightning M.2 on here, Lightning Gen 4 actually, and then on the other side there's a uh, there's a cooling pad. Now normally there will be like a plastic uh, cover over this one. Uh, you need to remove that because that's it. It's like it would isolate the cooling part. It's just to kind of protect this. Um, well, th this cooling pad from not, uh, you know, getting dusty or something like that, not getting dirty. So, but before you actually put in the uh, the SD and then put the cooling back on, you have to remove that part. So, just mentioning that. Uh, I'm not sure if we can. I'm I'm not happy with the the camera placement at the moment. Let's see if we can do something about that. Can we maybe tilt it a little bit? Is there something we can put in between there? It already looks a bit better. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Can I think a me? little bit tilted will be perfect. Can you show me? There you go. Yeah. Maybe I can do something. I don't know if that's enough, but I don't know if that did a lot. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm going to put the M.2 SSD in now. Um, I've got the slot here. So the slot's open, this is the connector here, right here. I'm just gonna fit it in, it's really, really easy. It only goes in one, one way, not that way. Here we go. You just slide it in and then it, it'll stand up like this. You just have to press it like that and then there's a little screw at the end. You unscrew it um, and you can use that one to uh, hold it in place. So here we go. By the way, Always when working on a PC or something like that, uh, magnetic screwdriver is a godsend. It really helps uh, preventing, you know, loose screws from getting everywhere, from fall falling everywhere into the PC. So it really helps to 
keep track of, of the screws and uh, not lose them. There we go. Okay. You don't have to tighten these too much, by the way. It's just to keep it in place. So it's, it's not really uh, like you have to uh, prevent it from, uh, I don't know, b blowing <laughs> loose in a hurricane. You know? That's not yeah, the idea. Yeah, it's not going to run away. Exactly. All right, then on goes the uh, heatsink. Yeah, DKP was saying, uh, you know what's even better? An electric screwdriver. Yeah. Yes and no. <laughs> I mean, yes, it's faster, and especially if you have to do a lot of screwing. But I personally don't like that you... Well, you, if you can adjust the tension, as in, you know, that it stops at a certain um, tension, then yes, that would be nice. But if you, uh, I, I was like, you know, the feel of, I, I want to know how, uh, how tight I fasten the screws uh, because I, I, you don't want to go too tight. That's, that, that could damage some things or at least make it very hard to ever take it apart again. All right. Um, so we've got the CPU, we've got the uh, M.2 drive. Now I'm going to put the memory modules in as well. Um, for this, it's always important. There are some uh, markings on the, uh, on the motherboard itself uh, and it's really really tiny i'm gonna see if you can you know, see this um, so basically you have four slots but it, it kind of matters in which order you put the uh, the the modules in so here it, it says first and it points to two uh, slots and th those are uh, the outer one and uh, the second one from the uh, from the top so those are the ones preferably I mean, it might work if you just randomly put them in the first two slots closest to the CPU, but the performance will always be better if you put it into these lanes. Uh, also, I think this is something that a stream that uh, maybe last year or something that, that uh, we did, where we covered the difference and, and why and how exactly this makes a difference um, on the placement. So if you want to know more about that, also we, uh, we have some coverage and some content on that. Uh, to put the, uh, just put it here. To put the memory slots in, uh, you just open the the latches at at both ends. Uh, some motherboards only have it uh, have a latch on one end. That's also fine, uh, but just make sure you open them fully before you proceed to to place them in. Um, obviously, the RAM modules they have a little slit in the middle here, a slot, and one end is longer than the other, even though it's sometimes hard to spot. So there's only one way that they fit in correctly. Uh, if you are having trouble or finding that it's kind of, you have to exert a lot of force to put, to, to, to get it in, um, it's really worth just checking if you have it the right way around, uh, because sometimes it's, it's, yeah, you'll, you'll have it the wrong way around and you'll be damaging it, uh, or at least it won't work if you, if you do manage to get it in. So normally you just put it in and then push it on one end and then the latch will click uh, closed, push it on the other end, and it will be the same thing. It will also close. You'll hear, hear a click. Same thing for the second module. Here we go. One and two. Easy as that. All right, so that's pretty much our motherboard done for now. Then yeah, we'll move so, on uh, to the case. Yeah, before we move on, uh, just to answer yes. a few questions, uh, there were some speculations regarding how much RAM the, this specific motherboard can handle. Yes, it's oh, yeah. indeed up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. <clears throat> so you can use up all four lanes. And also, uh, Jordi was asking, can you buy the AA uh, all-in-one fan separately? Well, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if we can separately... I don't believe so, the, 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 the separate to separate uh, the fans from the uh, only one cooling. Yeah. Uh, we do sell fans separately, yeah, but, but I, I'm not I sure see if that is specific that one. Exactly. I see that you you care you want to have the um, the logo in the middle. Yeah. Uh, you want to have that the same. I think our uh, separate fans they they don't have the the little dragon in the middle. Uh, what they what they have is and what you're referring to. Let me see if I can get it on on the cam so everybody can see what we're talking about. Uh, these fans have a little dragon here, as you can see in the middle. Uh, uh, we call this the fan sticker, basically. Um, but our separate uh, fans that we sell, they ha just have the the MSI uh, word logo, so it's it, it'll just say MSI uh, in the middle instead of the dragon. So 
Uh, I don't know if those, I mean, that's an interesting question. If, if there's, if, if everybody agrees that, the, or everybody really wants the, the dragon um, in the middle instead of the MSI word mark, then uh, that's something we, we might, you know, say to uh, our HQ colleagues to say, hey guys, maybe uh, maybe we need to also <coughs> offer them with the dragon. Yeah, that can be a uh, good feedback. Yeah. Rotate the dragon. Yeah, it, it does. It, it, uh, it spins like hell. <laughs> Uh, what specs is this PC going to have? Actually, they're behind me here. Uh, I'm not sure if you can read them. Maybe I'll get the chair out of the way as well. So, uh, Ryzen 7 3800 XT, uh, M uh, MPG B550 uh, gaming carbon Wi-Fi motherboard. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, we have uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe you can take over. Liquid uh, 360R cooling. Yes. Uh, we also have our uh, RX 5700 uh, 5, XT Gaming X model, which is the thick boy, as we uh, talked about earlier. Yep. <coughs> and then we are also using HyperX uh, Predator uh, DDR4 with a 32 megahertz or well, 3200 megahertz of uh, RAM speed, <coughs> together with a 16 gigabytes of uh, on space. So also for the M.2 SSD, we have the Seagate Genera uh, yeah, Forge and Firecuda M.2 uh, SSD with uh, 500 gigabytes of space. Yes. And as for PSU, we went a little bit moderate with a uh, Cooler Master V550. With a gold um, rating though, so yeah. it is a really good... Uh, <clears throat> Power supply unit. So if you're rating. planning on some massive upgrade for in the future, you might consider a, a, a uh, larger, well, uh, with a higher wattage PSU. But for now, this is more than enough. Yeah. And I mean, the thing about these builds as well is if you're going to build yourself, you can always upgrade um, the, the components inside modularly. So you can upgrade the power supply unit, you can upgrade the cooling, you can upgrade the, the uh, storage, uh, the RAM memory, uh, the, the motherboard, your, your CPU. The graphics card pretty much everything so that's a big advantage on if you if you manage to build a make a build yourself all right let's see so i'm gonna gently put the case down um i also saw maybe yeah you can answer this one i saw somebody asking how many uh, rgb uh, connectors are there on the b550 uh, gaming carbon wi-fi I mean, I, I could count them on the physical one here, but I'm I'm always afraid I'm I'm missing one or two. Uh, well, I might have <laughs> to get back to that one for right. now. I mean, there's a lot. I can see J Rainbow Two. I can see uh, there's a lot at the bottom here. A lot of USB connectors, sys fans, sys fans. Uh, so I'm not not 100 sure how many exactly, uh, but off the top of my head and just what i'm seeing here i would say there's uh like two or three but like i said you know there's a there's a hub on the back of this pc uh which also really helps to um you know if you want to connect more fans there you can connect it to the hub and that will uh that will take care of it anyway all right uh, let's get on with it. Um, when you buy a, a, a liquid cooler like this one, um, what you will notice, maybe we can get a closer view, there we go. Um, <clears throat> on the, uh, the the part that's going to be on the CPU, obviously there will need to be some uh, thermal paste, either on the CPU, well, on the CPU and on this one, but in between. Um, sometimes with some of these products, they will come with a, a layer of thermal paste pre-applied already, and there will be like a protector layer on here. Uh, which you need to pull off and then you can just put it on the CPU and, and you're done. I do believe with these ones uh, we have uh, a separate like a little syringe with some cool pa cooling paste uh, included in the box so you can apply it uh, yourself. Uh, I'm also going to show you uh, how I'm going to apply it on the motherboard but I'm going to do that after I've got it in the PC because I don't want to you know once I've, I'll be putting it on the on the CPU but once I've put it on there and I'm going to be, you know, messing around with cables and, and you know, uh, trying to, or at least, you know, putting the motherboard into the PC, uh, there's always a chance I'm going to touch the, the CPU or, you know, uh, touch the, the thermal paste. So that's why I'm going to do that after I get this thing into the PC. So let's get 
to that part. Uh, yeah, all right. So as you can see, uh, plenty of space here, and uh, there are a lot of there are a bunch of standoffs basically where you can put the motherboard on. Really nice thing about these standoffs is there's a, a little um, uh, thinner edge basically. Uh, most standoffs they basically just have a, a dull edge, and your motherboard, if you put it on there, even if it's uh, exactly uh, aligned with the holes in the motherboard where you need to fasten it, uh, it, it can still slide. You know, it's not really fixed. Uh, that the, just a little edge uh, that's standing up on this one means that it, once you put it in place and you, you have everything, all the holes aligned, basically it kind of clicks into place already, even without the screws. Obviously, you still need to connect the screws, but it, it does uh, make life a little bit easier because uh, the motherboard just can't move anywhere uh, once you have that. So let's see if we can do that. So obviously you need to be careful with all the cables, just make sure we get the cables out of the way. And Peter, while you're looking at it anyways, uh, can you see if the pin headers are mostly three or four pins? Uh, pin headers four? Four. All right, no, no, so no, for, for what? For fans? Oh, for, for fans, yes. For fans, yes, they're all four, so that means indeed, I think it's... Uh, um, uh, what do we call it, P PWM or no? Uh, I don't know. It, they are at least, it means you can, um, yeah, I think PWM is the right term. Uh, pulse width modulation. Uh, basically means that you can control the speed of the fans. So yes, uh, I think all, all of them. Let me just quickly check. But the ones that I can see indeed are all four pins. Yeah, yeah it's a... Uh might be also what we might expect from uh, this kind of board. Yeah. Uh, and also these boards, uh, because water cooling is these days quite popular, uh, these boards, a lot of them, they have uh, a dedicated, uh, well, they, you know, they, it's all designated on the keyboard. Uh, there's like, for example, CPU fan one and stuff like that, but there's also uh, uh, pump fan one. So that basically means that, you know, there's a dedicated header pretty much for uh, the pump and in this case in, in some water coolers the pump will be in the uh, uh, in the part that you put on the CPU in the cooling block um, but in this case the pump is actually inside the radiator so you will notice when you build this one in there will be uh, there's, there's a cable sticking out of this part basically but that's just for the RGB so this is an RGB connector uh, because there's RGB on uh, on the cooling part here on, on the uh, yeah on, on the cooler that's going to be on the CPU but the pump itself actually comes from the radiator so there's a cable going out there into the back and that comes out uh, I think yeah it's, it's one of these cables here it's, it's probably hard to see but it's one of these cables and yeah you're gonna want to connect that one to the connector that's designated as uh, CPU pump or pump fan one in this case So yeah, connecting the, the, the right connectors to the right place is really important in this thing. So, uh, and sometimes, especially if you, in my case also, it's been a while since I've built a PC like completely like this. Um, I've messed around with a couple of them, but not really from the ground up. So it, it was kind of like, right, where, where, which connectors do I put where again? Um, so it, yeah. Uh, all right. I'm actually getting ahead of myself. I was connecting, uh, or uh, I was already putting the 24 pin, so the, the, the main uh, power connector uh, on the motherboard, but I haven't even fixed any of the screws yet. Oh no. Yes, <laughs> so let's do that first. So um, let's put the, take the motherboard screws here. So there's, I think, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, or no, eight of them, I think, yeah. But it's really important to make sure your motherboard is uh, fixed properly into the chassis. Yeah. Any other questions? <clears throat> no, I think we're good for now. We have some comments. Uh, something that we do regularly see people ask is that whether we will ever give away a lucky plushie. Sorry? A what? 
<laughs> Lucky, that's on the table. Oh, that one, yeah. Um, yeah, people always seem to be interested in it. I mean, I understand why I'm still, I'm even I'm still trying to uh, score one. Yeah. <laughs> for uh, my car. These things are quite rare. Usually, they will be given away as prizes at events or sometimes uh, mm. local giveaways. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really know. I don't know if we, I don't think we sell them separately either. Um, yeah. Well, perhaps since we're getting so many requests, we can uh, arrange some deals with uh, yeah, our headquarters to see if we can get like a load of luckies and uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe one or two live streams, we'll uh, give them all away. Well, maybe, maybe we can do a little uh, questionnaire here as well. Would you be more likely to buy an MSI product if it came with a, a lucky plushie? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So anyone uh, who doesn't know what we're speaking of, uh, it's the red uh, dragon. So as you can see now on the left side, <clears throat> which is sitting right in front of me. Hey, this guy here. Yeah, that's, that's, right. that's the, the thick boy. <laughs> <laughs> he's not that thick, but he's really cute though. Yeah. yeah. So that's the uh, lucky uh, that we're talking the mascot. about. Mascot. Yes. Yeah. We get a lot of questions for this. So yeah, guys, we, oh, everyone's already saying yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this, you guys, and uh, send it to uh, our team back in headquarters so uh, that they know we're not lying. <laughs> uh, Sofian is asking, are you sure you've removed the plastic on a thermal pad in M.2 or not? Uh, yes, actually it was already removed. Uh, but yeah, so that's why I wanted to point it out. Um, there's usually a, a little bit of plastic which you have to remove because yeah, otherwise the, the thermal pad doesn't really connect or do anything. Same goes, by the way, for the uh, CPU cooler. Usually when you buy it, there will be like a protection layer over it um, to, to protect. I mean, there's like really microscopic small grooves in here as well, which, which improve the dissipation and stuff like the cooling capacity, basically. Uh, but you have to remove it. If you don't do that, it, you know, it will definitely affect the cooling performance, if not completely um, ruin it. So if ever you install something like this and and you, you you fire it up and you're thinking why does this thing get so damn hot and why am i smelling burnt plastic you might want to <laughs> check if you forgot to remove the little the little um yeah protection layer all right yeah seems like uh we have a consensus everybody wants the lucky <laughs> Well, maybe it's a good suggestion that uh, maybe we need to do uh, like a, uh, uh, I don't know, like a, a bundle in in the shops <coughs> so soon yeah. with some products that you know if you buy uh, if you buy a product you also get a, a lucky plushie. Oh yeah, you know that the problem with it is that probably shipping these things because they they take quite a lot of space, is probably going to be more expensive than than the actual plushies themselves. This one really sparks joy. <laughs> it does. All right, I think one or two more, two more, and then we're done. At least putting the uh, fixing the motherboard into place. Well, I see there's a question regarding Jake. Was I believe it was Jake was asking? Uh, well, one of his friend has like a i5 2500K and a uh, GTX 70, uh, 770 and 8 gigabytes of RAM. What shall he <laughs> uh, upgrade first? Well, I mean, if he doesn't have a lot of budget, uh, well, then it's going to be quite hard for him to upgrade the CPU because you'll probably have to upgrade the entire platform. So there's going to be a new motherboard, there's going to be a new pair of RAMs, uh, of course, a new CPU. So that's going to be quite a package. Uh, of course, if he has the budget for it, I mean, by all means, he should definitely uh, upgrade the entire uh, setup. But he, if he really has to choose and there's no budget, then yeah, I mean, go for the GPU. I mean, it's probably not going to give you like all the power that a new GPU is going to offer. Yeah, because for that you also need a uh, powerful GP CPU in order to you know give enough instructions to the GPU to work really hard. I see people saying infinite flex. I think you should have just went with infinite flex. <laughs> 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 no, but I, I mean I agree with Jai here. But on the other hand, I'm also thinking it really depends on the type of games you play and what you want to uh, you know what's currently bottlenecking your system. And the way you find out is, for example, you can use uh, afterburner uh, on-screen display. 
to find out during gameplay, you know, how your system is performing and, and what is kind of bottlenecking your system. Is it the RAM memory? Is it the, the capacity of the RAM memory? Is it the speed? Is it your CPU? Because if it's, I, th I thought it was a, a, a tw 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 two series. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's 2,500. That, that's, that's relatively old. So that might be one of the things, but again, it really depends on your game because a CPU really comes into play when you have, for example, uh, uh, high FPS games like uh, competitive shooters or something like that, where you get hundreds of FPS, that's when the CPU really um, matters the most and the, the, the core performance. But if you, for example, play uh, the really uh, demanding graphic games with where you get lower FPS, like 60, 60 to 100 or something like that, you perhaps might benefit more from a graphics card upgrade. So it really depends on your specific situation and, and, and what you expect your system to be able to handle and to do. But yeah, because it sounds like a really nice system and, and by the sound of it, the, the CPU is probably one of the oldest parts in there, maybe together with the motherboard as well. So yeah, an, an upgrade with your uh, motherboard, uh, maybe RAM memory, depends if you already have DDR4 and um, CPU, that might be good. And also, which resolution do you play? I mean, 1080p is a completely different story and, and uh, a lot less demanding, for example, in many titles than, for example, 1440p or even 4K. So, again, it really depends on your situation and what, what you're looking to be able to do. <clears throat> oh, I got a comment that uh, someone's saying I look sleepy. Uh, you do probably because most of the time I'm trying to see what you guys are saying in the chat, no. so I'm like I'm looking away. It's and a my, small my screen eyes, as well, right? My eyes are already not that big, you know, to start with. So <laughs> when I look away like that, it's even smaller. So <laughs> gotta owe up to that. Yeah. Um, but okay, I see. There's another question again regarding: uh, Is it worth it to upgrade from the Ryzen 7 2700 to the 3800X, or just go for the Ryzen 9? Whew. I mean, you already have all the cores with the Ryzen 7, right? So uh, if you really, really want all the extra cores with the Ryzen 9, I mean, performance-wise, if you go for the 3800X, you're not going to miss out uh, noticeable uh, like performance speed-wise uh, compared to the Ryzen 9 series. Well, the biggest advantage from the Ryzen 9 series is that they have even more cores to offer. So if you do a lot of stuff besides gaming, you have more productivity, you have yeah. like, you know, hobbies of you know, rendering stuff, then you will get more out of it. But if you purely just want to have decent speeds, uh, you don't need the extra cores from the Ryzen 9, then it's not necessary to go for the Ryzen 9. Yeah. By the way, I've now also come to a part where maybe if we go to the close-up, I'm going to yep. try and show you guys this, uh, which is really a pet peeve of mine, and I, I think for a lot of people. It's, it's this little bundle that, that I need to connect now. These are the um, connectors for, for example, the, the power button, the reset button, and, and that kind of stuff. And these are really, really tiny, as you can see. I mean, I very tiny. My, my hands are, are okay. They're not, like, huge or something like that, but these are really tiny, and it's really... I need to put them... Like, let's see, I think the, these connectors, are, uh, oh, let's see, these connectors right here. But actually, if I look closely, there is like a really tiny schematic printed on the motherboard right here, the white part here. Um, it's really hard, I think, I don't know if I can show you guys this, because I can't get the camera maybe close enough. But just above this screw here, there's a really tiny schematic that, that kind of tells you where each connector needs to go. For those of you who are building PCs regularly, or at least have done this before, is this something that really tends to get on your nerves as well and just takes a lot longer than, than it, you, you feel it should do? It's for, for me, it's always one of these things where I think, oh, come on! <laughs> Understandable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had a converter for those with these. Yeah, yeah. I, you, for those of you who watch the stream regularly, you might know Ruud. Um, and Ruud also said that, you know, there's, in the, in the past, there used to be like something where you, you could, you could, it's like a holder where you could just shove them in. So it becomes one connector and then just plug them in in, in one go. Um, and I just, you know, think we should make a Kickstarter for that or something. <laughs> I don't know. I want those back. <clears throat> uh. Well, 
Uh, if we see. get enough people to want it, it's going to come back. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I was just wondering if if other people also had the same experience where you're like, yes, that we need something for that. Well, guys, let us hear your voice. Yes. All right. I'm just gonna connect them. Or perhaps it's just because I'm I, d I don't do this that often, so I'm not used to it. And somebody like Mike, for example, he can do it with his eyes closed. But that would sound like a challenge, you know. I remember Eric doing a blindfolded build. I would love to see Mike do that as well. I know he's pretty skilled in the art of building PCs, but I'm not sure if he could do it blindfolded either because it, it is quite a challenge. Uh, and I'm sorry if I'm hanging above this. I, I really have to, it, these letters are so tiny. I really have to get up close to be able to read it. Uh, power <coughs> led. That's okay. While you're busy doing that, I think it's time to uh, announce the second winner. Oh, yeah. It's been a while. So, guys, uh, I'm just going to pick the second winner of today's uh, Steam Wallet Code uh, giveaway. So, if you haven't registered yet, you can still do because I expect that there's going to be even more. So, go to msi.com slash two slash insider, and there you can uh, perform as many actions as you want. The more you do, the more chances you have at winning one of this uh, $20 Steam Wallet Code. And uh, seems like we have uh, the second winner, and his name is uh, Sally Aiden. So, Sally Aiden, congratulations with uh, the Steam Wallet Code. Hope you get something nice with it. Uh, so, I heard from the chat that the Steam. Uh, well, the Steam sales is still going on until tomorrow evening, I believe. So oh. um, hurry up. You can still make a, a really good use of the $20 Steam wallet code. Yep. So, all right. Let's see how Peter is doing. By the way, I'm, I'm really wondering because I'm struggling so much. Well, I didn't really struggle with it, but it, it's like a very small thing that I, d I don't remember if Eric in his blindfolded build had to. I don't know if Eric is in the chat, but if he is. He was. Did, did, did he you, was. <laughs> like, did, did you do this blindfolded, like connecting these little things for yeah. the front panel? Because I, I don't buy it. I don't think so. I, I think the stream would still be going if you had to do yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure Mike was just like uh, telling him, no, 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 to the left. Yeah, on the front. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Okay, let me just do it. I mean, if he managed to do that, I, I, I'm just speechless. That that's just I don't know. I, I really don't know how you would be able to do that blindfold. That's a level of impressive that I just can't seem to comprehend then. <clears throat> uh, quite a few people uh, talking about a giveaway. Well, first of all, um, there is more than one winner because this was already the second one. There's going to be even more uh, before the stream is over. Uh, secondly, if the link that I described to you doesn't work for you, no worries because if you keep, a tra keep an eye out on the chat, you can see that uh, we have a bot uh, giving you the direct link to the giveaway every six minutes. Yeah. So you can just click on that one and uh, do whatever you want with it. So All good right. luck if you just joined. Yes. Just want to show another thing in the close-up. Um, mm -hmm. I On the motherboard you also, I mean besides the, the 24 pin here, the, the, the very broad connector that you have, uh, which is a power connector, you also have the additional um, I think, well, like dedicated CPU power uh, connectors here. And as you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see it clearly or not, but there's a, an 8-pin here and a 4-pin. And I'm only going to connect, connect the 8-pin. Uh, that's sufficient, more than sufficient actually for this one, uh, for, for the Ryzen 7 3800 XT. Even if you go for the Ryzen 9 3900 XT or, or 3950, which is above that, um, you probably won't even need to connect all of them unless you are considering doing some hefty overclocking with those models. Um, so yeah, you'll be fine with just connecting uh, the eight pins here as well, which is what I'm going to do right now. But that's more than enough power um, for this for the CPU. <clears throat> Here we go. Yeah, so people still asking where to register. Well, if you take a look at the chat, uh, the bot just uh, posted the direct link. So you can just visit that link. Liu Kari is saying, appreciate the free stuff. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> free stuff is always nice. Who doesn't like free stuff? Okay, so now comes my, uh, 
I don't know how, what it, if it's least favorite. I used to think this was really complicated because everybody kind of makes a big deal out of it. Uh, thermal paste, and usually they come in like a, a little syringe. Um, because uh, our uh, FAE department, he provided this one, uh, because they, they build PCs all the time, they test all kinds of stuff, they have to do that pretty much daily, so they keep swapping out uh, thermal solutions. So, uh, yeah, we have a, a little bit of a bigger tube here. But, um, you know, the amount of thermal paste you need to apply, that always seems to be like a thing where people go, it's either always too much or always too little. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a, a small square or circle in the middle of the CPU. And uh, yeah, the rest, I mean, once you connect the, the pump and uh, put, uh, just basically put the screws down, which kind of clamps it into place and, and applies pressure, that should then, uh, you know, just spread out all the uh, thermal paste on there uh, across the surface of the CPU and any excess will basically just be pushed out of the side. So it's, it's I mean, yes, you can apply too much and you should always be careful for that, but don't be afraid if you apply a little bit too much because then it'll just be pushed out the sides. And uh, assuming it's not, you're using non-conductive, which is uh, better in this case, especially if you're not sure how much to apply, um, then it doesn't really matter if some of it is being pushed out of the side uh, because it, it will not conduct anything. It will not short anything out, so it's fine. Um, yeah, maybe we can, uh, I'll, I'll, do, I'll try to do this with the top cam maybe. And then after I'm, I, I'm done with it, I can show you guys in the close up cam, how much I've applied before I, uh, put the cooler on. So pretty much. I'm, I'm hesitating if you guys can even see what I've done, so I'll just take the close-up cam and show you guys. Uh, maybe I need to put it at an angle, so... Can you, can you guys see it or is it too much light? Is it too much reflection? Uh, it's still too bright, you need to focus it more closer. Uh, and perhaps even try to block some light. Yes. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Okay, see if that I, helps. Where, where, which light? Oh, here we go, I think. Yes. So here you go, that's pretty much, that's how much I applied and it's not really thick on there. So as soon as I, um, yeah, this, this isn't really helping. Here we go. Oh, like that. Yeah. And as soon as I just apply it on there, uh, the, the cooler and um, put down the clamps, that should even out quite nicely and spread out and make sure that uh, we have good cooling. Nice syrup. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, is that a 550 watt power supply? Is that enough? Yes, it is, Francisco. Uh, for this specific build, definitely, it's, it's more than enough. I mean, we've got a, uh, what is it, a one, 105 or <coughs> yeah, basically 105 one, 110 GPU. watt CPU indeed. And the GPU is, I don't know, 200 and something, 250-ish, 260. So that, that's plenty of headroom. And then, of course, the other components also use a little bit, but those are the two main ones uh, that will use power or most of the power. All right, so now we're just gonna apply the, uh, the part of the, pump, uh, the, the liquid cooler, the core liquid 36, uh, 360R. And it's, yeah, I mean, it's a really easy process once you get the hang of it. And then you just start gently tightening the screws, like so. easier than uh, people might think <laughs> well I mean honestly if you the first time you do it it's always a bit of hassle I guess um, but you know I always when I watch streams people doing this they always make it look so easy to do this kind of thing but when you do it yourself it's always a little bit more uh, well it's different let's say it, it never goes as you see them do on the stream <clears throat> Usually because yeah. they've practiced this kind of stuff and they know exactly how to do it. So they, they don't get into any kind of surprises. <laughs> <clears throat> and if you uh, watch the classic, uh, the first how to build a PC video. Oh, you're going I to, wasn't uh, going to mention it. I, I think <laughs> the guy caught enough flack for this. You're going to get quite far. It, it was pretty funny, I have to say. But, you know, the guy was just trying to do a good job. Um, yeah, nothing against the guy, but it was just... No. Uh, it was funny, though. It was funny. 
And unfortunately, it was also a bit of, you know, it, it had to be corrected because it, it, there was some actual misinformation in there, which is never good. But um, yeah, anyway. Uh, right, so now I'm going to connect. And th this one's really important because this connector right here is the RGB connector for the pump header or the, uh, yeah, the, the water cooling header. Yeah, so if you want to start winning games, uh, you better get it correctly installed. Oh, yes. Yeah, if you, if you don't get this right, you know, everything's wrong. And I'm not, I'm not even going to jinx it because, you know, there is a chance that I've still managed to mess this up. Because, you know, it, it, this is a live stream. It's live now. This isn't practice. And with live streams... Anything that, that can go wrong usually will go wrong. That's just, just that's the rule. That's how it works. There's no way around it. Uh, all right. Um, let me just check this one more time before I put the graphics card in because that's then the, pretty much the final piece. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've forgotten. Or I, sh I should should have pretty much covered everything now yeah so last part now is the graphics card um maybe i can also show you guys i've i've intentionally left the um some of the extension brackets yeah can you go to the close-up there we go yeah uh left some of the extension brackets uh covers in so once you if you have a new case for example these will be in or even if you upgrade from a, a you know, a, 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 I don't know, a, a two-slot card to a three-slot card, you'll you'll notice that you'll need to take one of these out. Basically, they're just fixed with screws uh, along the side here. So just take out the screw, and uh, one of these panels will come loose, as you'll see, and then you can t just take them out. Just make sure you align the first one with the slot that you want to put the card in, or cards if you want to go for a multi-GPU setup. Um, and it's always best to start with uh, the slot that's closest again to the CPU uh, because again it's the kind of just the latency thing um, and, and these usually have the most lanes available as well uh, PCIe lanes so in this case uh, I'm going to use this slot which means I'm going to remove this little cover first and this little piggy after that so because it's a, a two slot card it needs two um, two slots on this end actually it's it's the card itself is thicker than two slots but to, to fix it on, into the PC let's see if I can show you guys this uh, as you can see so there's two expansion slots also because of the, the basically the two tooth or teeth whatever you want to call it at the bottom um, but the card itself is a bit thicker because the cooler does extend uh, further than the two slots but you don't need to remove other um, covers for this part because it doesn't need to be fixed uh, other than with these two screw holes basically that I'm going to do now. So let's get to that. <coughs> Again to do this uh, usually it's really useful to have a magnetic screwdriver because once you disconnect Ooh, I think one of our lights is dying uh, one of our studio lights but um, yeah once you uh, get one of these things uh, out uh, it's really easy to lose one of these screws in the in the PC and you don't want to be you know rummaging around for a screw that's somewhere loose also because it you know it is metal so it, it can connect to something uh, if you just leave it in there that's not recommended and if it if it yeah, if it if it's in there and it connects to something while the PC is on, it, it could cause a short or something, so that's never good. You just want to make sure that there's you don't leave anything in there that's not supposed to be in there by the end of the build. Okay, so let's uh, put the graphics card in. Also, by the way, you want to make sure you have... Um, if your graphics card, and for higher-end graphics cards, they will have uh, power connectors. There you go. So they, this one has uh, three eight pin, uh, sorry, two 8-pin connectors. So you want to make sure that uh, from your power supply, you also have the corresponding amount and types of connectors available to power the graphics card. So if your graphics card, for example, has uh, less or more, that's also where a modular power supply comes in really handy because you can just make sure that you have the exact amount of uh, connectors 
available and, and no more because yeah, also you know there's no need for for more cables in the pc if you don't uh if you don't use them okay let's gently put the graphics card in like this right, that's fitting in nicely there i'll just grab the cables the power cables Move them around the outside here. Connect them. So, uh, one guy is asking, what is the six pin uh, one with two pins? Are you supposed to put uh, it in the eight pin thingy? Well, um, as you as you already seen uh, or saw, it's separate. So you have the six pin and the two pin. Well, that's because sometimes you have a graphics card with a two eight pins, but sometimes you also have a graphics card with a one eight pin and one six pin. Yes. So in that case, you don't have to uh, have a separate cable to, in order to uh, comply with the one eight and one six pin uh, graphics card. So you can use this one separately to fit it into either a six pin or a uh, eight pin. So that's why. Thick boy, yes. Thick boy it is. Being it is definitely. And you, by the way, then afterwards, when the card is in place, you'll just use the same screws. You you uh, you use basically you unfasten to take the little covers, the uh, expansion slot covers, out of the case. The same screws that were holding them in place, you will use to uh, put the graphics card and hold the graphics card back into place again. So you don't need any specific or, or different screws for that. Or it's just the same. The same ones. All right, there's one, and there's number two. All right. I think that pretty much settles it for uh, for this one. So uh, it should be good to go now so let's turn it back on its feet um, again you know cable management could definitely be better maybe you can show the close-up so we can see a bit closer how it looks now there you go i mean it could be tighter it could be better um but you know for for, for this uh you know for, for the duration we have during the stream to build a pc this is okay uh, especially if I would open the back of this up, there would definitely be a lot of cables showing and uh, it's, it's quite easy to tie them together. I'm just not going to bother for now. Okay. Uh, what I am going to do is leave the side panel off until I've established if the PC actually boots and runs like it's supposed to. Because if I uh, already put the panel on and stuff like that and you run into any kind of stuff, you're going to have to get in there again to i don't know try to figure out what's going on or um you know maybe sometimes um just take a component out and reseat it as it's called just put it back in place to see if that fixes things um but yeah you can just uh, leave the uh leave the panel off for now that's fine right so i'm going to connect uh, everything i need uh, everyone is wondering will it start will it run or will it not that is indeed yeah polished human we definitely agree cable management it's the worst part <laughs> well cable management is an art form you know this is something yeah, if that you, manage you know to do it, if you do it right that it looks awesome but if you if you don't do it right it just looks terrible mm. Apparently, a lot of Game of Thrones fans here because of the cup. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cheers, guys. Oh, well, you know, we're pretty much talking almost non-stop here for like uh, two hours, two and a half hours. So, you know. Got to hydrate. Yes, got to hydrate and keep that voice uh, smooth. Keep those vocal cords hydrated um, stretch my right. back <clears throat> okay now i'm gonna have to borrow 
the monitor cable and I'm really hoping it stretches far enough so I can oh, uh, I like this comment Peter build it it will run Eric build it it will not run oh <laughs> I, I do appreciate the, the the faith you know that you guys really trust me on this but you know the thing is if it does run we're finally gonna get to the part where we can take the plastic off you know the peeling off of the the case so that would be a glorious moment wouldn't it oh yeah all right um Moment of truth. Let's go. Oh, I see lights. Is on. I see lights. There we go. All right, guys. I'm still Seems waiting. Like, I mean, um, honestly, uh, this is also, by the way, a thing that uh, some of you might not know. But if you uh, take a PC apart, even if it ra ran just fine and you just upgraded some parts, a lot of the times after you upgraded it, doesn't matter if you upgrade the RAM or any other part, the CPU, uh, the, the graphics card, what what can happen or will usually happen is the PC will take a bit longer to boot. So don't panic if it doesn't go straight away into Windows as fast as it used to. Um, this is to be expected. Um, however, what should be, I mean, while, while uh, uh, preparing for the stream and doing the build already before, I also ran into some issues. The PC, you know, the, the lights came on, but it didn't display any image yeah, uh, didn't, no I, I, I couldn't do anything and uh, really what was really handy is I'm not sure if we can show this but uh, we have uh, what's called easy debug LEDs oh uh, yes we can show this it's just above the uh, the 24 uh, pin connector there let's get that one out of the way this little bright light here there is multi uh, or sorry there's there's four uh, little lights four little LEDs there and they all have a little inscription and it's um i think it's uh cpu dram vj and boot and at the moment the one uh, that's uh, titled or labeled boot is um is on which is good that's a good sign but before for example i apparently i had some dram issues so uh, the little light at dram was just on um which will indicate to you hey, if there is a problem with either one of these components um, during booting, even if you cannot get into the BIOS or something like that, it will it will indicate to you where the problem is. And what fixed it for me was just to take the RAM modules out and put them back in, and th that was enough. So apparently, uh, maybe the the contact wasn't quite right, or maybe I just didn't uh, put them in um, well enough. I'm not sure. Uh, but just taking them out and putting them back in, and and that was enough. That that solved it. Um, in this case, I think we did it right in one go, so that's good seems to uh seems to be going just fine the only thing is i'm not getting any image on my monitor right here this uh -oh. also can sometimes happen uh, and it did actually happen before so what i'm going to do first is just turn the monitor off and on again to see if that will wake it up and get the signal but if it doesn't just rebooting the pc can also help yeah i'm not sure it can take a while sometimes before it uh, detects a signal or not maybe maybe because i've connected two uh, cables already so because we're going to be capturing that pc with uh, hdmi um, an hdmi capture card uh, but that means that I have to also connect uh, the monitor with DisplayPort. And Let's I'm just go going to reboot. At a time. <laughs> Sorry? Let's go one at a time. Yes, I'm just going to reboot the PC to see if that helps to uh, restore the image. Uh, yeah, the visual connection basically to the monitor. How much was the setup? Well, it was about, uh, it really depends on your region and where you were located, but pretty much one and a half k yeah one and a half k indeed um is the hdmi plugged in uh it was i actually took it out now to to kind of simplify it and uh, prevent the pc from uh, uh maybe sending a signal to the hdmi capture card instead of my monitor and now actually i have image so i'm gonna try to connect the hdmi capture card as well and then hopefully you guys should be able to see what i'm seeing do you have visual <laughs> 
Uh, I do. Let me see. I'm just going to see. Yeah, it's uh, it's detecting two monitors and it's uh, duplicating them, which is exactly what we want. So you can give it a try. All right. There we go. Yeah, that's the desktop. It's working. It, that's one working PC then. Right, now that it's working, Houston, we have a problem. No, I'm, I'm glad we actually don't. We, we do not have a problem. Uh, we're all good. Um, so now that we have uh, the PC up and running, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to check if we applied the thermal solution. So the, 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 the cooler, the, the core liquid cooler is, is cooling it well enough. So we're just going to open HWinfo64. Uh, sensors only, because that's pretty much all we need for now. Because what we're looking for is the temperatures. Uh, so we want to know uh, basically we we'll just keep an eye on the um, on the CPU temperatures to see um, if we've done it right. If not, we're gonna have to open it up again and. But by looking at the current temperatures, so that's the, basically on idle, it's around 40 degrees, um, going up and down a bit, obviously, because the CPU is still doing something uh, every now and again. But yeah, this is pretty good temperature uh, as a basic, or as a basis, sorry. Uh, then we're going to be running a Cinebench quickly to just see, you know, when we put it under stress, what, what that does with the temperature. So I'm just going to, there we go. It's started up the process. Here we go. So as you can see, it's jumping up to about 70, which is exactly what we expect. Uh, and that's under max load uh, at the moment. So probably if you would do this like a sustained test for, um, I don't know, for, for hours on, on this thing, on this setup, the temperature shouldn't really go above, I don't know, 63, 64, oh, sorry, 70, 73, 74-ish temperature, which is uh, really nice. And a really good temperature, a low temperature for, for this uh, CPU. Remember, this is uh, eight cores, 16 threads. Uh, this is a monster. And during gaming, for example, and streaming, you're not going to stress the CPU all cores to 100% like we are right now. So that means that the temperature should never go up this high even. Yeah, just to clarify, since quite a few people were commenting on this, uh, indeed we did have Windows pre-installed uh, with the right driver and stuff like that. Yes. We could have done this live, but uh, we'll be sitting here probably for two or three more hours. Yeah. <laughs> to have everything properly installed, uh, you know, updating the right drivers, updating Windows. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it didn't seem uh, really practical. So we wanted to show you the practical side of it. Exactly. I mean, you know, some things are, are actually quite simple. I mean, the updating process of windows and stuff like that it, it's simple it just takes time um so we we kind of wanted to spare you that part and just wanted to get straight to the the part where you really you know how you test if you've applied the thermal parts uh correctly and if temperatures are okay and and what you expect uh but also if the performance is good because again you know we, we did a, a cinebench um test and what you want is, I mean, there are some benchmark scores here, even uh, probably your uh, processor exactly. And you want to make sure that your score is up to scratch, you know, so it's it actually matches the performance that you should be getting. Uh, because that's important. I mean, that's the reason why you make this build uh, and, you know, you want to make sure you get you get the full performance. So I'm just going to do it again because it's, it's a pretty quick test uh, and benchmark. Uh, but just to show you guys again that, you know, you want to make sure that it's right up there with the performance level you are, uh, well, you're supposed to be getting with this processor. Somebody, somebody was quite impressed with uh, the max low temperature, asking what cooling it is. So we slapped a, uh, the uh, core liquid uh, 360R on it. So um, yeah, if you're interested, you can definitely check that out. Well, of course, as expected, because Peter promised something, and since it's working now, I guess it's, uh, well, it's up to Peter whether he wants to do some uh, banana peeling. <laughs> Sorry, what do I want to do some what? Some peeling. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, so, yes, you're People right. People are eager. Uh, but just, just before we start doing that, uh, here's the score, and it is indeed 
pretty much exactly uh, yeah, around the benchmark. So it, it's right on point, uh, just slightly above what I should be expecting to see in terms of performance. And of course, this is stock performance, right? So this is even before you do any kind of overclocking or any kind of uh, optimization to it. So you can even get more out of it. Again, one of the uh, key points and, and differences between the XT series, especially the 3800 XT that we've got in here, and uh, the previous uh, 3800X uh, is that there's a bit more overclocking headroom. So you can actually overclock it a bit more and a bit higher than uh, you could on the 3800X. That's one of the benefits um, that you can do. All right then, well, a promise is a promise. Um, and we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to show you this. Here he comes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, by the way, on the inside of this panel, uh, quite nice, is you, you have, uh, there's a, like a, a, a foam padding basically on both sides. So that also, it really helps to, uh, I don't know if there's any vibration or any noise in the case, this will help to kind of absorb that and um, make it more silent. It's just, you know, small touch that, you know, makes it uh, look and, and feel a lot more premium, for me at least. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to, put the side panel on so that it you know it, it looks like a finished uh, build I'm gonna push the uh, gently push the water cooling um, inwards uh, I think that should be okay then of course put the screws in place to keep the panel where it should be that's one And that's two. There we go. All right. So, guys, are you ready? Should we, should we start with the big one? I'm going to sit back and enjoy. I, I, maybe we need to, like, have a separate microphone for this at some point so we can do the ASMR thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, here we go. I'm going to lay back just a minute. Oh. <clears throat> And the best thing about this, no fingerprints on it. So it's completely immaculate. It's completely clean. No, that's fresh. And, exa and that's exactly why, you know, I, I kind of gave you the tip of if you have this kind of PC or you are going to build it, make sure that you, um, you just leave the plastic on for as long as you can until it's done. Because then you, you don't have to kind of, you know, keep cleaning it all the time all right so there's also one at the front uh yes mr mustard dogs you're just in time for the second peeling Ooh, <laughs> Ooh. here we go glorious so there we go one shiny really gorgeous pc so as you can see i mean the the four fans we've got in here right now they're all rgb and they're pretty much all well synced up <laughs> nice peel <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if I mean the thing is in this studio there's such you know there's there's a lot of light yeah we definitely see there's no fingerprint <laughs> uh, no yeah look at the beautiful thick boy yeah I'm not sure if I yeah well I no. think this way it just looks the best right that's just I mean, I think we can, you can, you can guys can look forward to some uh, really nice videos we're going to be making about, for example, this case as well uh, in, in the coming time, uh, if it's not already there. Uh, and our, uh, our designers in our team, they are doing a really, really awesome job uh, at, you know, making shots that, you know, make this one look crap. But uh, <laughs> I mean, it already looks pretty sweet like this, so I can't wait to see that video. Uh, they they know how just how to do the you know the, the light uh, you know the light uh, just right so that it just looks much more uh, gorgeous than it already does. Again, you know this is with so much light because it's a studio, so there's like uh, yeah <laughs> there's way more light than than I would ever want in 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 a gaming room or you know my home setup. So there the light would look even way more gorgeous. So. GPU sag. Well, there shouldn't be. I, I saw a couple of people saying that, but there, there really shouldn't be any GPU sag, really. 
No. I think it's also because the close-up cam was quite uh, wide-angled, so the closer yeah. you get to it, the more distorted the images can be. Yeah. Because if you look at the main cam, then you will see that well, it's not really saggy. So. No, and it, it it also doesn't move. You know, I can kind of wiggle it, but and of course, normally you wouldn't do this with a PC, but it uh, it doesn't move. It's quite it's fixed right into place. So that's. Uh, yeah, as we just asked if there are other brands, uh, other brands with uh, syncing to Mystic Light. Yes, yes, we have a very, very broad uh, Mystic Light ecosystem, including other brands. Uh, uh, we have a whole dedicated website uh, for uh, Mystic Light, stating all the partners that we're working with and uh, all the third parties uh, with uh, peripherals, uh, hardware, you name it, you know, going to going from a uh, power cable to uh, RGB uh, SSDs. Uh, yeah, generally just very, very broad spectrum that we uh, constantly work on. So that one will even get bigger and bigger. So uh, yeah, a lot of capabilities and choices in third party too, if you want to sync them with our uh, Mystic Light ecosystem, no yeah. problem. Just make sure, go to the website and make sure that the one you're interested in is uh, capable of uh, the syncing. Uh, Jake Tyler is asking, do MSI make keyboards? Yes, we do. <laughs> um, funnily enough, yeah, one of them is it, right and, here. And uh, it really keeps Peter uh, busy. It does, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, our gaming gear lineup has been steadily expanding in, in the couple, last couple of years. Uh, and it's really exciting to see, you know, the, the, the latest products coming out. Um, there are some products coming up in the coming months so stay tuned on that but we already have quite a good lineup i think of uh you know gaming keyboards uh gaming mice gaming headsets uh even a headset stand that we are using actually as a as a uh a camera stand basically because <laughs> it's it's quite uh, hefty and you know th there's a lot of weight to it but this thing is actually a headset stand <laughs> right here so your headset would basically just be yeah wh where the clamp is here um yeah so uh and we have mouse pads we have a lot of peripherals so that's yeah i mean we're, we're yeah constantly expanding again you know like uh even the, the chair i saw some people asking about the chair uh maybe jar can can say a little bit more about that but i mean this chair is you, you can also get this chair um yeah, yeah we, we've got uh, that's also liquid cooling there's a lot of things that we have so check out our website where you can always see the full product lineup that we have yes what well, we're sitting on they're also very thick boys uh yes Actually, very comfortable very, yeah a lot thicker than the average uh gaming chairs uh in even the the higher uh, price segment yeah so that's also one of the biggest reasons why i enjoy doing the live streams here every wednesday almost because i get to sit on this thick boy wasn't really there a, wasn't there a live stream where I tried it out and I I went you know there, there there's a thing there or there used to be a meme I'm not sure if it's still a thing about these you know gaming chairs that they can they can go all the way yeah, horizontal they can, they can all, all go the all the way, way flat right and the meme was kind of like but can it do this and then they would just you know go all the way back I did that I think and I pretty much almost like tilted over so you know almost fell over um oh yeah that was I, with with eric i, I can't remember yeah. which, which stream it was Me neither i just i can just remember that didn't quite go as as planned mm. but you know <laughs> that happens anyway uh but yeah i mean these chairs are, are pretty sweet uh really comfortable you get a lumbar pillow uh for your uh, lower back and you get the uh yeah. Usually there's also the neck cushion, but yes. right now we just took them off for the yes. sake of uh, doing stream because we move a lot and stuff. Yeah, and also because the the uh, neck pillow kind of would block the really nice MSI logo. So, oh yes, <laughs> gotta make the emblem bling. You know, it's okay. We'll, we'll sacrifice just a little bit of comfort to yeah. make things look better for you guys. Ooh, it uh, seems like someone is also uh, familiar with the GK50, the low profile one. Saying oh, there you go. Great yeah. yeah, yeah, that's actually one of our uh, uh, latest. Uh, keyboards. Uh, I, w I want to say I have it here, but uh, it's it's somewhere else in the room. It's one of my favorites as well. Um, the low profile ones. Uh, it's it's a mechanical keyboard. Yeah. Um, it's you know a lot of people know that the the normal the the high uh, profile uh, mechanical. This is also this is the GK70 by the way. Uh, mechanical uh, keycaps or sorry key, not keycaps uh, switches. Uh, you know 
they're really durable and a really nice uh, feeling to type on. You've got all kinds of different uh, combinations. But especially the low profile ones, uh, I really like because of the, the typing experience. For me, it's just really uh, enjoyable and, and premium. And also, it I have the, the you know the clicky kind, the one that you know has a, both a tactile but also an, an audible click, and um, it drives people around me insane when I type. So that's a bonus. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, it's it, there's really a lot uh, of different preferences, and it's really something that once you try it, um, especially for typing, but even for gaming, um, it's really nice. Yeah. All right. Um, so maybe. Uh, since we have a little bit more time, maybe uh, we can do a winner, and then I can uh, maybe fire up a game to Sounds see, like you time. know, to show you guys some performance of actually while playing a game, and also uh, doing a live stream on this thing. So I can show you the performance when you do those two things at the same time, which is kind of the reason why we built this guy. So, so let's see the next winner of today's Steam Wallet code giveaway is... Uh, I guess... Liam. Liam. Yes. Quite an easy name. Yeah. So congratulations Liam. Definitely go enjoy the Steam Summer Sales, which is still running to tomorrow. Yeah. So have fun with it and to all the rest if you still have one i'm not sure if there's going to be one more maybe maybe yeah, not. yeah uh, we'll do one more <laughs> at, okay. at the Peter end of the stream so you still have one more chance to win yes all right guys good luck yeah all right so um what i'm gonna do at least what the plan is is i'm gonna fire up afterburner because then during gameplay uh i can show you guys with the osd the on-screen display what is going on in terms of the hardware um, because I'm, I'm only going to use one monitor. A lot of streamers, uh, or if you're going in streaming, you, it's kind of recommended to have two different screens because then you can either you can put the chat on one screen and, and gameplay on the other, uh, or you can also kind of you know keep an eye on um, the, the program you know, like OBS or, or, or XSplit that you're using to, to do the streaming uh, to kind of keep an eye on you know your, your stream health, the, 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 your connection, uh, if, if the quality is still good. So. Uh, that's always really useful. Right now, I'm kind of uh, improvising, so I'm just going to use one monitor right now. And uh, I'm just going to start uh, OBS, which I've already configured. There we go. As you can see, there's a streamception right there. Uh, so it's basically just a di I've done a really basic display capture, uh, no fancy settings. Uh, if you want to see um, for settings, what I've done is I didn't change anything here for streaming. I just created a like a dummy Twitch channel, um, just kind of so I could, you know, stream there uh, without, you know, having you guys chase off to find the channel because that hopefully you don't do that. Um, and for the output, that this is the this is the important part pretty much because for this build, uh, it's pretty much the CPU, so the, the 3800 XT with the eight core 16 threads that I want to use for the streaming part, for the video encoding and then sending it off to Twitch so uh, it can be viewed. And while looking at the streaming options here, uh, the, the, the encoder is the important thing. So you've got X, uh, X260 or 264 basically. Um, this is, uh, oh, wait a minute, this actually changed. Hmm, that's uh, strange. Anyway, X264 uh, is uh, uh, supposed to be at least the CPU, and this one actually could also be the CPU. I'm not sure, but it, I think it, this is the GPU. Um, so basically, the yeah, the AMD Advanced Media Framework. I think this is part of the uh, Radeon Adrenaline uh, software as well, and, and the Radeon uh, Navi features. So you can uh, render things on the GPU and, and do the video encoding, the streaming on the GPU or the CPU. So the choice is up to you. But especially with a build like this, with a CPU with uh, eight cores and 16 threads, uh, well, we want to be streaming on the CPU because as you will see uh, during gameplay as well, you will have plenty of cores that are doing nothing. Most games don't use this amount of cores. So that means that you have plenty of uh, cores still available to do the encoding and the streaming part. Uh, the bitrate we put up to 5,000 uh, kbps or a kilobyte per second. You can play around with this. Uh, I, I started out earlier today just 
putting it at, I think the default is like 2500 or something. Um, and as long as you have like a static image, it looks fine. But as, as soon as you get like moving image and stuff, that it, it just the, the compression starts being quite bad uh, and it looks quite bad. So uh, 5000 I found is, is a pretty good um, point. Not quite sure, make sure your connection can handle it as well, your internet connection, your upload, that is. Uh, and there probably is a hell of a lot more things you can do to optimize this, but just to show you guys that we didn't really, you know, go into that much detail, it's just a quick, dirty setup. Um, what if you want to get streaming as fast as possible, pretty much. Uh, okay, and I'm going to say I want to start streaming, which is the button here. Uh, I've already connected this one up to the, the Twitch channel uh, that we've selected. Uh, and of course, uh, as you can see here in the bottom now, it will uh, start streaming. It will show if there's any dropped frames, uh, how long we've been live, uh, if you're recording, how long you've been recording. Uh, CPU capacity, so basically this also indicates that it's rendering uh, or encoding on the CPU, which is exactly what we want. Uh, and the CPU load at the moment is what, I don't know, 5%, 4%, so it's really light. Um, and the upload, so that's uh, indeed around 5,000 kilobyte per second, which, uh, or kilo, kilobit, kilobyte, I don't know, anyway, uh, KBPS. And so let's start a game. I'm gonna start off with a nice easy game of Counter-Strike. So most of you will know that this is, you know, is a competitive game, it's not very heavy, uh, especially not on the GPU or the graphics card. Uh, it is a very popular game if you look also on uh, on Twitch, so it's it's one of the uh, many games that you will find being streamed a lot. And as you can see on the, on my screen on the top right, there are that's the overlay from MSI Afterburner, so the OSD or on-screen display. And this you can fully customize even the color. I've, I've made it orange because I find it it stands out from most games and in most scenarios. Uh, and you can even um, yeah fully customize which information is being shown there and even how uh, you can see there's a graph here with the fps at the bottom um, this is because i've chosen to have it both in in a text and in a graph so that you can really see if there's any sudden variations the rest of what you're seeing here is uh, at the very top there's the gpu the temperature and the percentage of the capacity being used and all 16 cores of the cpu plus the CPU package, uh, the, which is kind of like the, the, the average temperature of uh, the whole CPU. But I, I wanted to specify the CPU cores so that you guys can see which cores and how many cores are actually being utilized and stressed. Um, and this is why this is significant is because, uh, again, you will see most games, they won't use all the cores, which means you still have plenty of cores left to do other things in the background without it interfering with your game performance. So let's start up a game. I'm just gonna do a deathmatch. I, I don't wanna bother anybody, because uh, again, I'm not gonna try hard. I don't even have any headphones on, no sound, so I can't hear anything, which is kind of, you know, I'm gonna suck, yeah. Um, but it's just so that you guys can see the game performance. Let's roll. <laughs> 1v1 me, well. <laughs> I'm a champion. <laughs> well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sure if you're uh, if you're gonna be happy or not if you want a one v one Peter, because uh, ja, ja did it a couple was quite times. a gem in uh, CS:GO. I won't touch you with Snake. Nah, we'll I, see if I, you still got it. I haven't played this in a really long time, so it's uh, yeah. Okay, Ja, you do the commentary, especially based on the. Uh... <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. this. I see my mouth is already. <clears throat> oh yeah, seems like guys, seems like Peter is back from his retirement. Oh, seems like he just fired man. up the game, trying to find out if he still got it. Trying to find a professional team isn't easy at this age, but he's gonna prove himself. He's already got the first at, frag. At this he's age, he's got it. He's got it. At this Always age, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, it looks like I threw him off. I, I I was kind of hoping you would comment on the 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 system. I think you were. <laughs> Telemetry and uh, mm. kind of the, yeah, the CPU I, usage. Definitely got it. But as you can see, yeah, over 200 it. FPS, or uh, right right when I said that, it dipped to like 160. Um, okay, mm. maybe I'm just gonna try an AWP for now. So definitely CSGO is one of those games that's like really uh, CPU dependent and very heavy on the CPU power. 
and uh, getting 200 plus uh, frames yeah, per second no, even yeah. with uh, all the settings are maxed up. Uh, you know, while well, streaming is quite a result, uh, you know, especially if you have like 144 hertz refresh uh, rate monitor, which uh, well, actually the one that Peter is using right now is 240 hertz. Mm -hmm. That's like really the combo that you're looking for if you're really into esports games. Uh, so at this in this case, as you can see, uh, it regularly hits like 240. Uh, it's always above 200, 250. We just had it, and if you just tweak some settings, you make sure here. that it always goes up uh, okay. to 240 uh, and plus. Come, come. So in that I case, you can really you. get you know, the come, maximum come, come, come. out of your 240 hertz uh, gaming monitor. Come. And uh, as you can see, uh, the GPU up, is not really working that hard. As you can see, 65 and 62%, so it's still got quite the headroom to left to, uh, yeah. Well, you're work so even good. harder, but you're so good. Uh, as we said before, this is not the uh, GPU intensive game. And even for the so CPU, it's also still quite, uh, yeah, quite no space left for it to work. But oh, oh, how was that not a hit? Yeah, that looked really weird. And uh, no yeah, who, uh, who are you guys go are still familiar with CSGO because oh, nowadays no. like, everything is war zone. I think a lot of people, I, I've seen a big rise in, uh, in CSGO I players since it went uh, free. Oh, yeah, 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 when it went free, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, when it's free, people tend to play it more, That's, that makes sense. Oh. Again, you know, I'm not really paying that much attention. Um, and that's uh, yes, that's an excuse. No, I'm coming. Why you come back? But yeah, so if you it's more uh, it's focus on the performance, you know, not my performance, the system <laughs> performance. But as you can see, also yeah. the, the CPU cores, um, some of them like CPU core one is, is being stressed to about eighty percent ish, oh like that. Um, but you know, the, a lot of other cores are, are barely doing anything, and that's that's really the point where uh, you know the, the streaming. And if I'm streaming or not, it doesn't really impact my performance, as in the game performance, the FPS. So that's that's really the thing we want to highlight here. Um, and what we're gonna do in a minute is also uh, fire up oh Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So we also, also want to show you this was a, a CPU intensive game, let's say, because of the high frame rate. But we also want to kind of show you. Um, let's see if I can get a knife kill. <laughs> uh, we also want to show you guys, um, you know, what happens when it, when it's a more GPU intensive game, when when it's more demanding of the graphics card. Anyway, um, I think, any questions uh, about that? Yeah, oh, please mute game. Seems, yeah, there seems to be some issues oh, with so the in-game chat. Oh, it's, of course. Yeah, 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 that's always the thing. Anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna exit the game anyway, so it's, it's okay. I'm sorry, sorry if the, the chat was anything uh, bad being said. Uh. All right, let me just uh, take off the, the sound. The three dimensions, the giveaway the isn't available anymore in Europe. It should be, but uh, indeed, some countries do have uh, specific laws that you know we have to respect because they, they don't allow um, yeah giveaways like this. So um, I think especially Italy, I'm not sure if you're from Italy, for example, but that's one country that, that doesn't allow giveaways. So we have to respect that. And uh, that's yeah, why, it's, I've, it's unfortunately, out of, out yeah. of control. Exactly. People from that country are uh, unfortunately not allowed uh, by their government to, to join. Um, okay, let's see. Um, where's my... There we go. You play account. So what's next? There we go. So that, yeah, so, so that explains it. So I'm, I'm really sorry about that, uh, the three dimensions, uh, it's, uh, but it's, it's just the way that uh, the legal system works. So we have to respect that. Uh, yeah, so far we don't have any problems with Brazil, uh, Brazil. no, so it should be good. <laughs> <laughs> Regarded with a useful tip. Yeah. So also, if we look at uh, OBS, for example, I still see there's no drop frames, at least not from my side. So that means that the CPU hasn't been able to, or sorry, has been able to uh, encode all frames, no matter uh, what. And, and I put it at 60 FPS, which is the kind of the, 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 the standard right now also for, for Twitch, for gameplay. Um, 
So yeah, 1080p, uh, 60 FPS, and no problem so far for the CPU as well. Now let's let's do a bit more of a demanding game. Yeah, so now we're really moving up to the uh, AAA title category where, you know, visual is really like much, much more depend uh, demanding. Yes, so it's much more tough on the, the, the graphics card. Uh, but also the CPU, I mean, because there's a lot of graphical elements that need to be uh, that need to be rendered. It's very high resolution, and um, it's a demanding game. Let's see how it goes. Also, the temperature, by the way, you can see. I mean, during gameplay, I'm not sure during uh, Counter Strike. I didn't really pay attention to the the, the temperature there. <coughs> the temperature was really uh, quite low. Yeah, which is to be expected because the, the CPU was not really yeah, stressed at all. Now you're, you'll, you will be seeing a bit more, uh, you know, the CPU being is stressed a bit more, so it's already uh, 54 degrees. Still nowhere near the 70 degrees that we saw during the Cinebench benchmark. Uh, the GPU also, it's, it's you know, it's now being stressed uh, fully pretty much, so it's, it's up to 73 degrees, which is okay. Um, I think it's it's from starting from 60 degrees that the fans even start spinning at all. So that means that 70 degrees, it, it's still fine. Um, I don't know. Debt collector. I, let, let's see. Let's just continue. So still in the loading screen. And yes. right after this, well, even now, uh, the TPU can still go to 100% close to and after yep. this you're gonna see like the increase in oh this is an intensive scene well, oh, it's still a cut screen <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i think we can uh can we skip this i think we should be able to hello oh yeah here we go but this this one is quite a heavy scene though so and all the settings are on max uh i think so yeah it's been a while since I played this game. Yeah, and like uh, right off the bat, you see like a big, big difference because uh, right now the CPU is like working a lot harder than in CSGO. So you can see a lot of the cores are now being like almost double utilized. Uh, and so they have Actually, to send a lot of instructions, a lot of the frames to the GPU for the to, uh, to render and give you all the frames that you're seeing right now. So even the CPU is working a lot harder than uh, with the CSGO yeah. game. So the graphics quality at the moment is very high. Um, I, I do remember, because we, we covered this game when it launched, I think, and there were some um, elements, like I, I believe the depth of field, for example, effect, that, that were quite demanding on the, uh, on the graphics card. Uh, and on, on the frame rate had a big impact and there were more but I, I just can't remember which ones exactly but so yeah I mean you, you can get more performance out of this obviously um, and these games are really demanding uh, so that's on, on, <coughs> and not just on the graphics card because I was looking this is always a strange thing with uh, some some Ubisoft games or at least it seems to be a thing with a lot of their games where you can see the graphics card I mean it's it's being utilized 58 67 69 percent 51 so you're thinking you know there's more performance there so what's going on you know it should be fine to, to do more but it's not doing that um, and I, I really don't know why that is um, it's it's a bit strange oh that guy died so there's there's definitely more headroom um, it's also a bit strange that the fps is that's well, quite low so i'm not sure if it's just this scene i mean there's a lot going on in the background as well um, so maybe we can um, Maybe we can go to, to uh, a benchmark in the game as well. Because there's a built-in benchmark that might give a bit more of a balanced idea. Um, and probably get closer to full utilization of the GPU anyway. <laughs> it's, it's Brad Pitt fighting. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. It's funny, right? But because every time when it's like loading something, it's always close to 100%. But as soon as the game starts, yeah. it's... Uh, yeah. All right. So here we go. We can run a benchmark with the current settings. 
Yeah, this is a strange thing, and and you know it, it really depends, and it, it differs per game. Um, but usually in a game, there are some games that will use your GPU up to 100%, especially if they're graphically demanding and well optimized. Um, same goes for for CPU, but it it really depends per game, and and it's weird. Sometimes it's also difficult to figure out what exactly. The only the only way pretty much to figure this out is to you know start changing settings uh, individually, and then seeing what, what that does exactly. Uh, actually, here the GPU is also not, not even fully stressed, so... So 63%, 70%, so... Something weird going on. I, I think I remember when we did the stream on, on this game as well, um, that we also were a bit puzzled by why it wasn't fully utilizing or using the, the performance. And it could even have uh, something to do with the fact that we are, uh, you know, we're, we're running a stream uh, through OBS to, to Twitch directly, but we're also, uh, the graphics card is also sending out a signal through HDMI to a capture card, which is what you guys are seeing right now. So, it, you know, there are a lot of things going on at the same time. Uh, if, if I wanted to figure out what's going on here. And normally in, in a setup for, for you guys, for example, you wouldn't have the uh, external capture card uh, in the process. So that's one thing that, that uh, we could already try, for example, to see how that would affect the performance. It could be that that thing is messing um, with the performance. There, there are a lot of factors here in this one. But I mean, just uh, seeing that uh, you, you're, you're only using about 60% of the performance and yeah, you're getting 44 frames per second on, on average, so you should be above 60 easily um, while streaming. And I think the most important thing is also, again, the goal here is a streaming rig while you're playing games uh, to check OBS. And here you can see, I'm not sure if you guys can read it, but um, drop frames, zero. So, so still, the CPU is easily able to handle all the frames that it has to encode and send to Twitch. Um, so there's there the, the stream should be really smooth um no stuttering no missed frames and and that's really what you want if you're going to be streaming so again the the yeah the system is is more than capable of handling uh playing a game and streaming at the same time Yeah, I'm seeing people asking to benchmark different games. Unfortunately, I, I don't have other games installed on this, so it, it would take a while to um, to download that. So I don't think we have the time to do that here. Yeah, especially nowadays with all the games, you know, being so big. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah, it takes yeah. so much time. But I mean, it, you know, just to to show you guys and give you some idea of, um, you know, the, the PC and and why this PC is is quite capable of of running uh, games and streaming at the same time. Um, it, it's pretty much down to, uh, mostly down to the, the Ryzen 7 3800 XT with, with 8 cores, 16 threads. Um, yeah, I mean, that thing has plenty of power for, for you know, doing these things at the same time. Uh, and, and really, no sweat, you know, it's, it's just easily able to handle it. Overclocking the PC will help. Yeah, it could be. I mean, again, you know, I, d I didn't even go into the, uh, I didn't even go into the the, the BIOS. So it, it could also be that the the RAM memory speeds, for example, aren't really uh, that the the, the the XMP or AXMP profile is not um, set up. It could be indeed. I, I could still overclock the, uh, I could still overclock the CPU a bit, get a bit more performance out of it. Um, but I think it's more about you know th there's a lot going on on this PC at the moment because we're we're you know again we're, we're streaming to Twitch directly through this PC, uh, but also it's sending a, a signal separately through an HDMI uh, cable to a capture card on the PC that Ja is at, uh, which is our director PC. It's like an external PC that handles this, the, the streaming part for us. Um, so it's 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 doing multiple things at the same time, and and that could also very well be uh, messing with the performance a bit. Uh, it's usually if you have too many things going on at the same time, uh, that's usually when stuff gets, uh, I don't know, it, it can influence each other, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, definitely notice uh, the performance impact from yeah, here and there. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, there was still a guy, I think uh, he was like the second time I read about this, but uh, have we tried the uh, like the oh, RGB button on the front? Uh, so no, we can, we can see if we can try it. I mean, it's, it's right here. Yeah, on people the, are really on uh, curious about all the effects uh, yeah. the, uh, the fans have. Let's see. Here we go. Let's we'll just cycle through them. So this is one. I'm not sure if this is like a static effect or if it will change. I'm trying to look at it on a on a monitor I have in front of me as well, so I can see what you guys are seeing. Staying the same. It, it looks yeah, it looks static. Oh, here we go, single color. So just to show you from Different up above, color. Uh, there's the button right on the right side of the case. Yeah. It's the little button right there. So there are two buttons that look the same, and there's a really bright LED right here, which is like the the power button. Uh, but there's really two uh, exactly the same size buttons here. One is the uh, this one next to the power button, which is here, uh, is the reset button, and then the other one on the outside is the LED button, uh, which kind of you know you, you can use to cycle through the pre uh, predefined RGB effect. So if you go back to that one, I think this is also like a different color. It's like a green, probably right? Yeah, a nice green. So it's uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it's so really it's, uh, uh, screwing with uh, the chroma key. Different color green, still green. I think, yeah. Uh, more bluish. So it's like, yeah, you, you can just quickly cycle through different colors. Um, and But you will note, I mean, this is just what's connected to the case. So you will note that you can see the, the memory basically here, the memory modules, they're still just doing their own thing. And I think the, the motherboard will also be doing its own thing and the graphics card uh, because they are not connected to uh, the, yeah, the, the, the rest of the fans uh, of the, uh, or oh, sorry, the, the, the hub that's managing the, the LED effects if you use it on the case itself. But you can still sync them up through Mystic Light, but you would have to do it through software. So that's, uh, that's important to know, because you, you can see that they're doing different things, um, but that's the reason why. So this is like a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> rainbow effect, basically full just- Full unicorn puke. Yes. The full RGB intensifies. Oh, okay, yeah, it's just basically it just cycles through the colors and it will just um, go through them one by one. Like in a, in a, it will try to complete the circle in a, in a clockwise fashion. Uh, DKMP Drifter, yes, uh, the fans do have a hub, uh, the, uh, the addressable, uh, use, uh, addressable RGB hub that's yeah. connected to the motherboard. So yes, you can address everything via a software. You yeah. definitely can. Yeah, but you would have to do that through the software. The, yeah. the button on the front just has a couple of, uh, you could, you know, the, the, the smart RGB stuff, like synchronizing everything. So that, that goes through uh, the software. And you could see this like the, the, the dumb option, like the, the quick and dirty option of, of RGB. Just a couple of predefined effects. And it only pretty much connects the, the stuff that's uh, connected directly to the case. So not the motherboard, not the, uh, the memory, not the graphics card, just the fans pretty much. So again, if, if your motherboard, graphics card and memory don't have RGB and, and your pump, that's fine. You know, the, then you just have the fans. Uh, and as you can see, I mean, there's, I don't know how many different effects there are, but there's, there's a, a, a definitely, so a lot. I mean, there's, there's like a breathing effect here in, in, in every color. I think we have quite, uh, quite a lot. I don't know. There must be a lot. <laughs> so anyway, I think you guys get the point, right? Yeah. So, is it uh, maybe time for the last winner? Yes. Yeah, let's do that. And then, uh, yeah, I, I hope you guys got a lot of nice information uh, from this stream. And maybe uh, if you haven't built a PC before, seeing us do it on a semi-regular basis kind of gives you the confidence to maybe give it a go as well and gives you some, some information, some pointers on how to do that. All right. I think you have, uh, you have our last winner of today, don't you? Yep. Uh, our last winner of, of today is uh, Beardy Baldy. Nice. So, uh, nice description of yourself, if that's true. I don't know, but it's a nice name anyway. You know? Congratulations. Hope you have fun with the $20 uh, Steam wallet code. Exactly. All right. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to the winners. Thank you all for joining today. Uh, again, I hope you got some more information about how to uh, build a, a, a good streaming PC and, and why d several components and specific components are very important to have uh, and, and how to choose them. Again, you can go to amazon.com and find our uh, landing page uh, titled 
streamer of tomorrow, which shows you a lot of these things and, and, and gives you a bit more context about the builds and, and why you should choose which components. Um, yeah, and then uh, I think next week, what, what do we have next week? <coughs> next week, you're going to be uh, seeing my face again, but then on the other side of the table. Here. And uh, yeah, we're going to show you something fresh again besides gaming, because uh, you know we at MSI, we do more than just gaming uh, nowadays, especially since last year, a year and a half. And uh, yeah, so next week I also have a special guest joining the live stream, showing you guys, you know, the real life work in the real, uh, yeah, behind the behind the screens of real life work in the content creations market and that world, you know, what a professional really does and how he does it uh, with uh, you know a lot of video magic. And uh, yeah, so next week uh, we're going to talk about the P100X, our content creation, well, the top tier content creation uh, PC, and uh, yeah, what it's all about. So if you're curious. Uh, be sure to check it out definitely i would check it out anyway because again you know it's yes it, it's a lot of gaming stuff but this is cool anyway so uh i'm gonna be checking it out i know that much all right all right guys remember it thank you for joining yeah i'll see you guys next week have a good day goodbye